Hello and welcome to another episode of Hedgehog Makes. My name is Austin, aka Zombie Hedgehog, and today we're going to be continuing the Micron Plus build. I've done some work off stream, such as build the entire gantry, finish up the Z, assemble it, disassemble it, assemble it, disassemble it a couple times. So today we're going to be going over what I did off stream, um, some of the mistakes and issues I ran into, and hopefully get get some progress on it. So um, as always, this is being streamed on Twitch, and I will post this afterward on YouTube. If you're watching this live on YouTube, well, it wouldn't be live on YouTube. If you're watching it after the fact on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below. Uh, do you see yourself building this kit? Have you watched this entire series and you're really interested in a Micron Plus from West 3D? I seriously, I like this thing. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit more during the stream. So, who we have today? We have Physex, Little John, Glendon, Nick Nick. Welcome on in, everyone. So, I'm currently printing off some boot parts. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do this, but hypothetically, I should be able to use my, um, my tap kit from West 3D and install that onto a boop setup. So, boop is just a small format. Uh, of tap, where tap is the uh, Voron's nozzle probe. You have an A1 on the way. Awesome. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of good, solid printers that you can buy now, like out of the box. So one of the main reasons why you'd want to build this is that it's enclosed. So it's probably the most compact 180 millimeter ABS printer. There's nothing else that's really in the same format. There's not really any other 180 core XYs that are, you know, quite, quite this, this small. There's some that are bigger and that's fine, but um, I really like this size and form factor. It's pretty good. I guess the, the King Rune, um, their, their clipperized printer, it's a little bit bigger than this. It's like two something, uh, 210 maybe by 210. But, you know, this, you get to build the whole thing yourself. All right, so let's just get some of the issues out of the way before I really get started. So if you watched the previous two episodes, um, I'll go over a couple things. So number one, the Z-belts, okay? These, these things right here are probably the biggest pain on the printer. So if you're using the stock, the stock Z-assembly, you have to install the belts, put the, put the Z belts through the, through this, um, drive gear when you're installing this. So you want to have these floating as you're getting this installed. If you don't, it's very, very difficult to feed them up and around. It's like almost impossible. So if that's the case, if you built this, then you forgot, oh shoot, I got to run these belts. Um, all you want to do is unscrew the two screws right here. Take this whole thing off, including this belt, and then run your belt and then reinstall it. So it's not that big of a deal, but it's very difficult to install while it's assembled. Uh, but I was able to just unscrew each one of these and, you know, pop this, pop this whole thing off and then reinstall it. The tension is still there because I didn't move the actual motors. So that worked out well. So that's, that's issue number one. Um, issue number two is the gantry. So I built the gantry, which looks like this, and you have to install the belts before you install the gantry on the printer. I thought for some reason it would be easier to work with this when it was installed in the printer, but you can't get the, you can't get the belt through that front idler it's nearly impossible. So once again, you have to have the, the idler exposed right here, run your belts beforehand, and then you should be good. Uh, a couple of things. Let's see. What did I mess up on? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> um, oh, so when you're building the bearing stacks for 
the AB idlers. So that's this part right here. These are the only ones that don't take the standard spacer, idler, idler, spacer configuration. In this, there's a little bit of a printed, uh, one side has a printed little spacer built in. On that side, it does not need a, a spacer. So it goes printed part, idler, idler, and then a spacer. So that'll that'll make it so it fits together snugly. Um, and the reason for that is because you're printing at 0.2 layer height and because it's a 1515 extrusion, something you can't physically get it centered or at the correct height. That's what Hart K said, and I definitely believe him. So that's something you'll have to keep in mind. Uh, other than that, oh, yes. Uh, these. Remind me, if you're watching this on the, the premiere, remind me to put a link for this in the video description. So these are little holders for M3 nuts. And these are almost, like, necessary for some of these parts. I should have just used these from the start. But these are some type of uh, no-drop nut mod. Um, it, all it is is a little printed piece that you slide your, either there's a, a standard hexagonal washer or the square, I say washer, nut, uh, a standard nut or a square nut. And then you take this and slide it into your extrusion. This is so they don't fall out. So this would have been really good to put in for all these random ones that keep sliding around and you get to position them. So once you put it in place, it stays in place. So that will be your friend you will want to use it. Don't fight with trying to trying to keep them in. But you can use square nuts or or the standard M3 nuts. Uh, both of them work in this extrusion. Are there ROM idlers available? Um, that's a good question. So the updated idlers are the beefy front idlers, BFI. There's also beefy Z idlers, BZI. I think by Klee remember correctly. Um, I've not checked to see if there is, but if there is that style of idler, I would recommend that for this build. Um, I don't know if the the West 3D kit will have uh, the BOM for it, but that's definitely something that I would recommend over, over the stock idlers. Same exact reason um, for the standard ones on a standard 2.4 is that they're just a little bit awkward to install. So, those are the main issues I ran into. I was trying to do something, and I realized that I had to take it apart. Okay, I was trying to run the belt, so I had to take it apart for the second time. Yeah, that's kind of rough. Um, so, how I've been installing the gantry, because I've had to do a few times. It is not the, not the easiest, but it's also not the most complex. There's two ways of doing it. You can either have the printer upside down, and screw into the gantry from the top here. So right here, you can screw it in from the top. If you do this, you'll have to grab your your washers and then carefully place them on the hole and then slide this whole thing through the washers into the hole. That's what I've been doing. Otherwise, you have to flip this around and then you pretty much have to... Um, uh, you use zip ties to hold it to the top of the printer. And then you just do it from beneath. So you just have it come up from beneath. And then you can slot your uh, two, two spacers on. So either way works. I found this to be the slightly easier version for me. So I'll show you how I've been doing that. So the first step is to grab the gantry. Um, the first step is to orient the printer. Uh, the first time I installed it, I did it upside down or like the, the back of the printer was in the front. So position your printer so the, the cutouts for the for the top here are at the back. And then that's where your that's where your motors are gonna be. So before I do that, I'm gonna grab two spools of filament and then place them on here. This will just act as a bit of a uh, a place to rest the gantry. I'm going to take the gantry, 
and then slide it in at an angle. Should be plenty of room. Making sure the motors are facing uh, up. If the printer is upside down, the motors face up, and then the motors should be where the cutouts are. So then I'll just uh, get this into place. Oh, also, all of these rails have to be moved to the top. So push all of the, the carriages to the top, and then do that. So, perfect. Okay. So next, you'll have to deal with the belts. So I actually, uh, I was disassembling this and I just stored the, the washers on one of these screws, so I'll take that off. I don't know if I'll be able to get a good view of this, but I can try to get one. Did I lose the, the screw? I think I did. I think it's just a small size. Yeah, okay. Oop, I lost that one again. I would recommend getting yourself... If you're going to be printing or building any printers, it's very useful to have just sets of fasteners. So get yourself at least one kit of fasteners, uh, M3, from 4 to 40 or whatever size. Uh, 4 to 50 is pretty useful. So get that in both the socket head and the button head because chances are you'll be missing something or you want to install a mod or whatever the case is, it's worth having. All right, so let's go over here and see if I can see if I can show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to start on this side over here and I'll try to get zoomed right in. Perfect. So this right here is where the belt is going to sit. So you have your belt already pre-run. So you have two, two leads from the top. Uh, one of them goes in the hole back here. So you slot that into the hole. It's right here. And that passes through there. And then this front one actually gets uh, screwed down here. So you grab your, your little part, has a cute little um, uh, face on it. <laughs> so one of these and the screw. Where'd that screw go? Did I already lose it? Grab the screw, put it through one of these and then slot that on like so. And then you're lining up the belt so the the last tooth is on the last little hole here. You don't want it sticking out past the part. So you want just like that. And then screw it in a couple turns just to keep it tight. Okay. And then you have your, your screw, insert the screw inside of this little bearing. And this is the one that swivels. So it'll, you want to make sure to press it in straight. So get your screwdriver in there, make sure you can spin it. Okay. And then what I've been doing is taking my driver and then putting both of the, you need two, two of these little shims, which are just washers. And I take it, I hold it over this hole and I flip it upside down. So it kind of just places it on there. And then I take this and kind of align it over the holes, press it into place. It can be a little finicky. You can do this up the other way, but you'll have to, again, zip tie the gantry to the top. But I find this works pretty well most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. Of course, when you're not, when you're not on camera, it works well. Okay, I have to like slide around the gantry because my hole's not actually lined up. Um, this is the first one I'm inserting. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Now it's in. And then you want to screw that in tight. So just get it as tight as you can right away. 
There we are. Make sure this one's tight as well. And there we go. So that is installed. Easy as that. Yes, these are calibrated spools. Absolutely. <clears throat> Hello, hybrid Duff. Anyone else who might have joined in? What is the easiest to build Core XY? That, that's a good question. In terms of easy to build, I would probably say the Rook 2020. Um, using, you know, 2020 extrusions. It's extremely simple. There's not many parts and all the parts are pretty small to print. So I've had, I've had pretty good luck building that. Uh, at least like being the easiest to build. If you're looking for a larger printer, Trident is not the simplest. Or it's not the easiest, but it's definitely one of the simplest Core XYs. So people generally start with like a Trident. Um, you want to get something with 2020 extrusions. Don't get something with 1515s. With these, if you miss a preloaded nut, then you, yeah, it, it's not a, not a great time. Because you have to go and disassemble everything. And luckily I haven't had, I don't think I've missed any preloaded nuts. Actually, no, I, 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 I have, <laughs> I have missed preloaded nuts. Uh, it's not. Not the most fun thing. All right, so I'm just doing that same process where I'm putting a belt in and then putting on these little covers and then screwing this thing on. I've gotten used to it. Uh, one thing I will recommend is join the do um oh, which is it Doom Cube Discord, and that's where the the official help. Or uno officially unofficial help build channel is for the Micron. So you'll probably want to reference that. Uh, 300 by 300 Core XY? Probably a Trident. A Trident 300. So um, this guy down there. The 2.4 isn't super difficult, but it is definitely. You have to make sure more things are right on the 2.4 versus a Trident. Trident kind of self self corrects everything. Uh, Nema Nema motors and oiling them. Um, you mean the actual like stepper motors? I've never I've never greased or or lubed an actual stepper stepper motor. No. The only thing that I really lubricate on these printers are, uh, you know, the linear rails, the carriages, and then lead screws. But I don't, I don't really do anything else. Of course, there's a lot of things you potentially can, uh, like your your flange bearings. Those those can potentially get lubricated you can disassemble them re-lubricate them with a better lube and but i'm not an expert at that and i usually just leave them alone the way i see it is most things that could potentially require lubricant besides rails and lead screws are set up well enough to where i'll just replace them after a couple thousand hours that's my philosophy on that And yes, you don't want to ever take apart a stepper motor. Like, that'll just ruin them. So, no. There's nothing to really, really lubricate. Stepper motors are cheap enough anyway. You can just replace them. Alright, so this side is on. Hopefully, I've done, hopefully I'm doing everything correctly. Sometimes when I talk and build, stuff gets missed. <laughs> which is just natural for doing anything. Would it be easy to get the same quality prints from a Trident as you have with your KE? That's a great question. So any, what I would call a custom printer, any custom printer, you will have more challenges 
getting the same quality prints as an off-the-shelf printer because most printers will come with a pre-calibrated profile designed to work well. You know, the, the hardware comes tuned enough out of the factory to where it should just work. If you don't touch anything, it will work as intended by the by the manufacturer. So a lot of people get or build themselves a custom printer, but then don't realize that they'll still have to go in and tune it and make sure that it's built correctly. Like if you mess up one step, um, I've seen a lot of issues where the frame wasn't squared properly and the rails for the, the Y aren't aligned correctly. And then you get bed meshing issues and, and stuff like that. So in my opinion, it's more of an enthusiast type of build to where you don't mind working on it. Kind of like getting a project car. I relate a lot of 3D printer stuff to cars. It's like getting a project car, right? You don't get it because you want a reliable car. You want it because it's something that can be good if you put some time into it. It will work great, but then might also have random times where there's issues that you have to fix. So if you want a printer that just works nonstop, depends, depends on the circumstance, but buying one straight up could be a better option in some cases. I love building printers, but for me, it's just for fun. And that's why I don't have two of the same printer. Um, but I have seen uh, Voron 2.4 print farms. So people will will specifically get and build out a bunch of these 2.4 style printers and use them for uh, print farming like ABS and other large items, but specifically ABS. I think for the price, there's very little printers that can hit like the 350 mark and print ABS well. That's just what I've seen. Uh, of course, now that Bamboo has driven almost every company to make a, a good core XY machine, we're gonna see equivalent printers to like a Trident that cost half the price. We already see that. Look at the K1. Like that's already a very cheap printer. You're not as much as a printer enthusiast as you thought you, as you thought you were. Yeah, well, there's a lot of printers that just exist and that work well, especially now. My recommendation is, if you're interested in building any custom printer like this Micron, make sure you want to build it. Right, you want to be dedicated to building it and dedicated to tuning it. You might run into issues building. But that's part of the fun. This is a project. I've had a blast building this, even though I've had to take apart this gantry a couple times. Um, due to, honestly, just not following the steps of the manual. That's that's more or less my uh, lack of judgment. But it's been fun. I've been actually... This is one of my most exciting printers that i built so far. And that's not a lie. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed this thing. Probably one of the other most exciting ones is the original Rook because of how unique it was, and just that satisfaction of seeing the first print off of it, that was definitely worth it. Yeah, K1 Max, if you need a big printer, that's kind of the recommendation right now. All right, so now I gotta flip this gantry. So I'm gonna take out my, my calibrated spools, those aside, and then flip it around. I haven't put any handles or panels on this yet because uh, when it's in this state, all the sides are flat. So you can just set this on your desk. But do note that this side right here, the side that's on right now, it does rest on the rail. So you can see I'm sliding this around because it's on the, the carriages. So what I gotta do is carefully, if you're moving this around and flipping it, remember that gravity exists and You'll have to fight that. 
So I'm just going to rest this down. Um, this will rest on the end stops that you put in previously. Make sure you don't forget to include these blue end stops. Otherwise, your rail will just come right out. And the, how many times you're flipping this around, you will need those on. It's not a, it's not a suggestion. It's a requirement. <clears throat> All right. So then we have this like, like, like so. And uh, I think I have to put one more belt through here. But we're pretty much in the home stretch for belts. So I want to get all of the belts through their little little holes. Make sure they're not twisted as you're assembling them. There we go. Put that through. So just pull them all up so they're they're completely through. Like so. And then make sure nothing is twisted. It's good to like triple check your work every time you do anything on this printer. Cool. You twist your belts, you get a twisted T. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I got to revisit the twisted T eventually. I want to do some upgrades to it and make it a little more um, user friendly. All right. <clears throat> so. I have already tensioned, tensioned my belts. So what I'm going to do is untension them. So at the top of each one of these idlers, there's a little screw. It is not easy to access and you'll want to, you want to work on it before you install the belts. That's my recommendation. So I'll just go over this once. I don't know if I can get a good view on it. Let me see. Maybe. Uh, sure, we'll do this. So this guy right here, this is the Z idler. What you'll want to do first is loosen up the actual mount like that. So it can slide around just a little bit. That's because as you screw this in, this part that goes up and down gets pressed against it to kind of hold it in place. So we want to start with this at its loosest setting. So you'll stick your screw in through the bottom here and then unscrew the screw. So the end of it is flush with the, with the nut. So have the, the end of the screw flush the nut, uh, too, too little. And you risk the, the nut actually popping out and too much means that you might not have the adjustment room you need. So I like to have it screwed into the back of the nut and then hold this whole piece down as far as it'll go, right? Push it, push it down. So it should be recessed a little bit inside of here. And then once that's all the way down, take this part, push it against the frame and re-tighten it. Pretty snug. So then when you go to tension the belts, this part doesn't really want to move. So it'll be a really easy, you know, finite adjustment getting this belt tensioned. So repeat that for all four of them. So I'll just show you that. Loosen up each one of these. Make sure that it's all the way down. Pull it down if you have to. And then tighten them. If you don't do that and you install your belts, um, it's possible that you're, you won't be able to tension them further because they're already at their maximum point. I actually already did that. I went and installed my belts, got them kind of correct, and then realized that these weren't set up correctly. That works. And I don't know if there's any mods for any of these things. I'm still pretty new to this printer. And I do know that a bunch of mods exist. So if there is an issue with a part, Start by checking the mod repository or just asking questions saying, hey, is there an easier way to do this? And then someone is more than likely to say, hey, yeah, this mod fixes this one issue. This already has a lot of mods applied to it, but um, it still might need some additional tweaking.
Ender 5 Plus is still at a good price. Um, the Ender 5 line is a little bit, I'd say, dated, really. The new, the new one that they have, their latest Ender 5, is not bad. But, I don't know. There, there's a lot of enclosed printers that I think are generally worth, worth more. All right, so what we're going to do now is take your, take your belt, like this. And do I still have this in view? All right, take your belt and then slide it through the, the idler. It should be straight, should be twists. Double check, make sure it's not twisted. And then you want it kind of snug. And then I should be able to get this one on camera too. Let me just tilt it down. And then you go down here. And same process, except one small difference. So I pre-screwed these in. I screwed all of them in when I was building the, the gantry, just to keep the nuts in place. Now that I know about the no drop nut thing, uh, that makes it a lot easier to just not screw this in at the beginning. So take this out, and if you have just loose nuts in there like I do, just be careful not to move the gantry. And then you want to take this belt, take the end of it, and then insert it up through the mouth. Like there's a little face on this thing. Insert it through the mouth, up, like that, and then move it down. So the goal here is to get this kind of pre-tensioned. So you want the, the tension of the belt AKA how tight the belt is to be kind of in its final state on the slightly loose side. You want to be able to tension it, but you need to be able to install it. So what I usually do is get this installed and I'll back it out by one tooth at a time until I feel like this belt has enough slack. So right now, as is, I would say it's kind of on the loose side and I would pull it one tooth forward. This can be a little bit tricky to do, but just try your best to uh, to work in increments of like one belt tooth. So I'm going to install it just by screwing it in. Screw one of these in a little bit. Screw one of them in a little bit. And then get it as tight as it can go. The printed part should be flush on the side here. If you see that there's a gap, that means that this isn't in its proper spacing. So right now, it looks like I have a bit of a, right, it's a little, it's a little loose. And this can be taken up in the slack. So I'll demonstrate that by tensioning just this one belt here. So by screwing up the, the top screw, I can take out that, that slack. I'll show you. There we go. So right now I have this much. So we're going to screw this top screw in. It's kind of awkward because of, of how it's positioned. But you'll want to screw this in. A ball end might be perfect for this application. So you can see it's, it's already a little bit less tension. Wow, this is actually... Uh, definitely, definitely would want a ball screw or make sure that you're really pressing up against the screw. Screw it in. Once you get the belts in, it's awkward. But now you can see it's it's more tensioned. And I like to use this little tool from a company called West 3D. This is not their design, but they sell these pre-printed tension meters. And all you do is put this on your belt just like that. Uh, ideally for a, for one of these belts, you should have around two pounds of tension. So it should be on the two. But I found personally, just the way that the, the measurements work for the Z axis, that should go a little bit higher. So I would recommend tensioning your, your belts a little bit on the higher side. So I'm gonna make this show around 2.5 pounds. I can do it mostly by hand. But I'll uh, 
I'll just screw this in a little more. Kind of feel it. Yeah, that, that looks about right. The actual weight of the gantry is going to cause the whole thing to, to hold itself. So it's not, it doesn't matter too much, but I like to have it a little bit tight. So it's still around two. You can actually check both of the belts to make sure that they're equivalent. 2.2.4. Let's see. So I'm going to try to get this a little bit more tight. And it really, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Um, but this tool is useful for getting them all the same. So whatever this value is right here, looks like around 2.3-ish. 2 I'll try to aim for that for the rest of them. So let's just keep doing that. Not too bad, but doing it the first time can be a little bit tricky. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm sure that this whole process can be improved ever so slightly, but I don't know what I would change. Okay, so this one I got to pull the belt a little bit more. I found that it's actually kind of hard to pull these belts up when they're locked on the motor. You kind of have to twist the motor and like pull it. But just make sure that make sure that this belt can't come up any further. You can do that by manually twisting this little the the short belt in the bottom. Twist it until this won't come up any further. So you get everything kind of at the right tension. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I insert it upside down through the mouth and put it down. And I'm going to get it so it's kind of at the right tension before tensioning it. And then use the screw to get it into its final tension. This is just my method. There are other ways of doing this. You can use your phone app to get the right tension. Okay. So in this case, <laughs> I'm screwing this in. It's going in infinitely. So that means my little... The little screw that's behind here has come out of position because I wasn't using the little printed part to hold the nut in place. So I'm going to twist or tilt this all the way this way so I can kind of see the nut and then just shim it into place. And I can see that's there now. And so that's kind of one of the annoying things if you're just preloading nuts, but it's not super difficult to get them aligned. It just takes a little bit of finessing. So I'm going to get that in there and then I'm going to might as well just tension it while I have it over here. So I'm going to get it roughly where I think it needs to go. And again, I think a ball end would be optimal for this. I usually don't like putting a lot of pressure on ball end drivers, but this is just an awkward, awkward spacing. I might recommend a slightly modified or at least look for a slightly modified uh, top idler to prevent or like allow you to actually screw it in properly when when it's been installed. All right, so this is around the right tension already, so I'm gonna leave it as is. And with this type of setup, it's not super critical to get everything tensioned 100% um, correct the first time. What you want to do is print with the printer. Actually print with it. Your first prints might not be the best. That's because these are belts. They're going to kind of settle into place. All the printed parts are going to kind of settle. And once they do, uh, after a certain amount of time, maybe like 50 hours, 100 hours, then you can go through and do a rigor rigorous tuning of the printer. So just get everything kind of close enough to start. It doesn't have to be exactly correct, but good enough to get some prints off. You get an adjustable tensioner like the uh, Ender 3 V2. 
That's an interesting question. So that's kind of what this is, right? It's just a screw that goes back and forth and lifts this thing up. But are you talking like a, a knob based one? Yes, I think that's possible, but that also adds a lot of space. And the top of here is flush with the top of the panel it's going to go on. So there's no real room for additional stuff like that. And realistically, once you get this stuff set, you'll never really have to touch it, except for maybe that, that secondary fine tuning, like I mentioned previously. So I'm already pretty tight on this. It's gonna screw it in a little bit. Also, ideally, you want to have all of your belts kind of at the right, the same length. I honestly don't know how critical that is. I think it's, I think it's important, but I don't know if being off by one belt is going to cause any serious issues. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. If, if my Z belts, if one of them is one tooth off from the other ones, is the tension going to take up the slack or do they all have to be the same length or else? Like this one, I can actually loosen by one tooth. Um, I can know that because of how much I have this tension versus these two. This one doesn't take as much tension to reach the same amount as the other ones. So I'm just going to loosen up by one tooth. There we go. I feel better about it being all the same. Like the answer is yes, they should be the same, but why? Or what's what's a, a belt off by one tooth really going to do? All right. So I'm just eyeballing it using this little, little tension meter, which is super, super helpful. Like I said, if you don't have one of these, I would recommend picking one up from West 3D pre-assembled. I was able to tension all my printers in like five minutes, all of my printers. It is so useful and just comparing to see if they're the same. And it's fun to see on like a bamboo, like how tight are the belts on there? Cause I don't I touch those. They're at around like 1.5 pounds. They're very, very loose. And I'm wondering if I should tighten them up. Uh, tensioning should make them match. The movement distance only down a tooth pitch and the motor angular motion, not the length of the belt. That's what I was thinking. That's what, that's what I was thinking, but I don't know. I could be wrong, right? All right, one more belt. Then I'm going to show you something magical. Something absolutely magical. One of my favorite things about these printers too. And I think, no, oh, wait a minute. Do I have these on the wrong way? No, I think it's supposed to be like this. Um, like on which side that the, that these stick out on, I think it's the top, but I don't remember. That's kind of how I've been, how I've been doing it. And then when, when we're done, done, I'm going to cut these to length. Uh, also, note the note the length of the belts that are that are extra. I just eyeballed these and made them all the same length. So I ran one belt. I measured it. I didn't even run it. I just like put it on the outside of the printer and then gave myself a little bit of extra slack. So this amount right here was kind of perfect because when I ran my AB belts. This is like the perfect length, you know, it's a little bit longer, but I wouldn't cut it any, any further. So I pretty much maximize or, uh, you know, I maximize the belts on here. I used every single inch that I possibly could. And to be honest, I just guessed. <laughs> also, I was actually about to run the, the AB belts and I was wondering if I had enough slack. And I do, but it's it's a little tighter than I would like, but it's perfect. You know what I mean? It's it's perfect. So 
Let's see, let me get this a little tighter. Yeah, see, that's way too loose. Let me get it tighter. This is in the right, right ballpark. Let me tighten it. As you tighten it, it's gonna get a little bit more. Uh, this belt's gonna tighten up a little because you're pressing it down slightly. So let's see, is this the right tension? I can tell by going up here and tensioning this. Just trying to make them all about the same, that's all. So about right here should be good. Let's double check it. We are perfect. All right, so that is close enough to get this going. So my favorite thing about this printer and 2.4s in general, I'm about to hold this printer up by the gantry. Okay, so this is the frame. And this is the gantry. Yeah, so the thing that just slid up and down easily is being completely held up by the by the gear reduced steppers. So the fact that we have this small drive here going to the much larger gear here and then being reduced to go up here. This right here is more it's harder to, to turn than the 2.4. The 2.4 I can at least move it up and down a little. This one I can't. It's like it's locked in place. So if you're wondering about the stability of this type of printer just being driven by belts, this is probably one of the most stable designs. I would argue that this is more stable than lead screws because lead screws you have the the potential backlash. A lead screw is not a tight fit. Um, it, it is able to go up and down a little. So for some reason, there's a vibration that could translate to the print. Here we have belted Z. So it's a fixed tension and there's no real vibration. Like that is locked. That is locked on there. So that's why I like this style of setup a lot. I think lead screws are fine, but this has a lot of potential. Um, the other style of Z-axis are ball screws. So I actually have one right here. Um, this is for a future build. But a ball screw has the best of both worlds. So it's like a, a regular bearing, but there's absolutely no play in here at all because there's little ball bearings that ride along this. Um, uh, this I don't think this one's a machine shaft, but it's a precision, precision shaft. I'll put it that way. So this style of motion right here is probably the best because you can go pretty high speed. Kind of like uh, linear rail. But you also have the the motion that brings it up and down. It's kind of cool. So I'll be interested to try out these. And it's, it's almost the right size for this printer. <laughs> right? You can put that right there. Yeah. It's like the correct size for that. Uh, unfortunately, these are a little bit greasy. So. <clears throat> what graphene belts? I don't know what that is. You've been able to tension your ender belts by feel and check with the app and it's fairly close. Yeah, once you understand what the belt's supposed to be like, it's kind of like this. Hard to explain, but that's about the right tension. It should be tight so it doesn't slip, but not too tight that it's like really, really high pitch when you fling it. What's the benefit to moving the gantry on a Quarks by versus the bed? That's a kind of a half personal, but then half scientific question, answer. If you have a really large print, right? Let's say you want to print something huge, like, like this right here. Pretend that you have this print, but it's, it's giant. So when you start printing it, there's very little material. But when you get to the top, there might be, oh, I don't know. Um, uh, many, 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 many kilograms of plastic. I'm talking like really big printers. If you're doing a, a large print, it makes more sense to have the part stationary on the bed. So as the part gets larger, there's no additional strain to the gantry. Um, the other thing with this setup is that it's belt driven. You can move the Z axis 
very fast. On my 2.4, I have it set to around 150 millimeters a second on the Z axis, but on the Trident, it's really limited to around like 20, 25 millimeters a second. So if your gantry's at the bottom and you wanna to go to the top, this takes like a second to move up and down. Um, cleanliness of prints, that's pretty honestly subjective and I've heard it both ways that if you had two parts printed, let's say equivalent size Trident and 2.4, the print quality would be almost the same. That's what I've heard. So there, there are advantages to the, the 2.4 style gantry, but Trident gantry style is a lot simpler and people tend to go for that. Bolsters are expensive. Yeah. Um, these ones I got though, they're uh, $15, 15 bucks. We're going to see how good they are in a future stream. So make sure to stay tuned. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to my Twitch channel where we do a lot of shenanigans and testing things and just kind of have fun. Um, I do more build series and focus content on YouTube. So if you want to see some more fun, uh, make sure to watch live on Twitch. Hello, Firefly. Welcome in. So we just ran the, the Z belts and now it's actually rough because in order to move this whole axis up and down, you really, man, you really got to pull on this. So pull down and move it up. Yeah. It's like, it's rough. It's very, very difficult to move this up and down by hand. This one seems pretty, pretty loose for some reason. I don't know why. Look, oh. Um, I might have an issue here. I think that. Am I not on? Let's go on here. It's not spinning the shaft as I'm moving it. So it, either the belt isn't on the pulley or the pulley isn't tight. I think the belt is not on the pulley. Okay. So in this situation, it's a great great troubleshooting step. Um, see when I move this, this doesn't spin or moving, moving this does nothing, right? So the belt is not on the, the pulley. So I'm going to take this and then slide it over. So it's on the pulley. It's like on the edge of it. I think I honestly can't really see. Yeah. It's like on the edge. So I need to move it over. Uh, that's one thing you'll want to make sure before tightening anything to make sure all of your your belts are on the correct. I'll have to loosen this up and try again. Are on the correct, like completely on the bearings. That's very important. That goes for the Core X Y kinematics too. Oops, I completely loosened this. Uh, will that be an issue? That might be an issue. But let's just get this back on and then we'll deal with it. Yeah, so uh, now it's on the it's on the actual pulley. So now I'll be able to put this back on. But because the belts run, it's actually kind of hard to put the screw through just how the design is implemented. Let's see if I can get this tension. If, uh, if I got a Vorn or other Core XY, print, a Core XY kit, would you consider building it? That's a great question. And that's a very complex answer because um, building a printer takes a lot of time. There's a reason why you don't see people building printers because of labor costs. If you factor in, let's say a, a $20 an hour, right? And let's say it takes 30 hours to build one of these printers. That's 20 times 30. That's, that's $600 in labor for only $20 an hour charging yourself. Um, like, do you want to pay a $600 premium to get a printer built? That's already fairly expensive. When you could just buy a, a Creality K1 or a Bamboo or whatever. 
The answer is always it depends, right? What are you going to use it for? Are you going to use it for mass production? Do you need it to be this really well-tuned machine? Or is it just for fun? Because honestly, yes, I am willing to build printers for people. But just note that it takes a long time to build a printer and it will cost a fairly significant amount. Uh, a spoiler alert, I'd charge more than $20 an hour to, to build one of these things. That's like the bare minimum that I would, you know, charge. And that goes for anyone uh, wants something built. Side note, um, because I had to align that belt on the pulley, it was around the edge of the pulley, but now I put it on the, the correct teeth, which meant my belts are too loose now, so I'll tighten them. And I will also say that if you're looking at getting a custom printer like a Trident 2.4, any of the other 3D printer kits, Rat Rig, etc. It's sort of important to know how they're built because there's a strong chance you're going to run into some issue down the road. Something. You'll have to eventually lubricate your, your rails. So you'll have to know how to take apart the gantry to lubricate the rails. Now, it's something that you can just watch a video on, but... It makes the whole experience better if you're able to build it from scratch. And if you don't do that, then you might run into a harder time maintaining it. Or just really understanding how it works at the end of the day. So if you're kind of in that boat, like, you know, should I pay someone to build me a printer or buy one? Um, I'm usually going to lean towards just buying one that already works and like the bamboo I can tell you how the bamboo works because this is a uh, this is an x1 carbon right if someone else has an x1 carbon they have an x1 carbon like they're all relatively the same it's way too loose now get pulled the, the gear down. Oh, yeah. Right, I'm just getting these pretty much good so they don't slip. I think that's good enough to, to get started. And then we'll go from there. And, yes, that's a great part. Shipping. In order to ship something, um, the shipping itself is going to be very expensive. Like, just something like this would probably cost uh, a couple hundred dollars to ship. Because you'd have to, well, maybe maybe not that much, but still a, a pretty significant significant charge. You want to get insurance on it, uh, and then everything has to be prepared to kind of ship. And these printers are not designed to ship. I'll just I'll put it that way. They're fun, but they're not designed to be these commercially produced printers. Cool. So we're getting there. Dom, thank you for subscribing with Prime. I appreciate it. So yes, hybrid in your case, I would probably just buy a pre-done printer like the Crowley K1 Max. Or wait, Bamboo's going to have a big printer next year. Uh, it'll probably cost the same thing as a Trident kit. You know, maybe that'll be a good option for you. What's next? Well... I've already run my belts, as you probably should have done. I think the manual also wanted you to put the the tool head on, but I wasn't sure if I had all the parts for mine yet. So let's kind of go over the tool head. This is a, a whole a whole segment. So you have a couple options when it comes to a tool head. You can either use the stock. I think it's a mini mini stealth burner. Maybe that's stock. It's whatever the standard Voron V0 tool head is. But there's something called a Dragon Burner. Dragon Burner is probably one of the best small form factor tool heads in the market right now. Because there's so many configuration options, you can put almost any 
a tool or any uh, hot end, any extruder on it. There's different configurations for um, probes, lot, lots of options with this. And they're all designed off of a Goron style gantry where the belts are in the front and the teeth face forward and they're in the kind of trident configuration. So we're going to be using Dragon Runner for this, but we're also going to be using Boop. You have two options for your probe. You can either do Clicky. Clicky is standard for this build, or you can go with Boop. I'm going to use Boop because we'll have no loss in in a, in our XY. I, I don't believe we'll have any loss in the XY, and it makes calibration a lot easier. Boop is very similar to Tap, where it uses the nozzle to probe the bed. And that's becoming more or less standard for 3D printers now. Think of the Think of the bamboo where the nozzle touches the bed. So that's uh, probably the best way of homing right now. Yeah, of course, there's going to be better ways in the future, but the physical touch is, is something that's nice. So yes, clicky is stock. You can use clicky. Um, and I was thinking about using it, but... The issue with Clicky is that in order to install it, you'll have to have a bracket that goes in the back right here. And the bracket will need preloaded nuts. So if I wanted to use it, then convert to uh, to Boop, I'd have nuts in there that I don't want to remove. And I could make like a little just adapter to, to screw it shut. Like that's not a huge deal, but I'm just going to go straight to Boop. And I'll be experimenting with using a, a tap kit from West 3D. So this is the West 3D tap kit that I had bought for a different project and didn't use yet. So um, that is not going to be what's included in the kit, but I'm going to try to make it work. Yeah, there is a new gantry for the Micron. I am aware of that, but we're going to use the, the released gantry now that is known working. Welcome in, Steve. How are you doing? So yes, there is the Micron. Micron is one of the printers that's probably going to receive a lot of mods and a lot of attention just because of the design. And then same thing for Salad Pork. Both of those are two little mini printers that are bigger than a V0. I think a lot of people have built their V0s and then were kind of like, hmm, I spent all this effort to build a 120 printer. Why didn't I just build a 160 or 180? So in my personal opinion, the 180 printers are the way to go. If you're gonna build a little printer, they don't take up much more room than a 120 and you get so much more capacity. It's quite nice. And it's just fun. It's fun to build like a little mini, mini 2.4 Trident. Uh, so what we have here is the, the Dragon Burner. This one has a custom Micron uh, shroud on it. So we have this. I have the parts, or at least hopefully all of them, for the boop carriage. This is the new version for Dragon Burner 8, which adds these two little um, supporting brackets in the bottom. And those will screw, I don't know how this lines, but those will screw into the bottom here. So there's two extra holes on Dragon Burner 8. That allows for a lot more rigidity. So that's really nice for a tap style setup like this, where the whole thing's in a press against the bed. So we have that. Off stream, I did build a sail fin. This is the first time I've ever built one of these. I don't even know if I built it correctly, but this is the sail fin. Just using BMG gears, you can use a, a mini, um, a, a Sherpa mini. Sherpa Micro, I think. Those are two common options, but I wanted to try the sail fin. I like how it looks. Looks like a little shark fin. <laughs> Pretty cool. Seems like it's going to work out fine. I played around with it and it feels smooth. Doesn't really have any play to it. So I'll be mounting this onto the top as my extruder. Then on the back, we are going to have a, a custom PCB. This is by, um, well, I don't know. I think XR Bunker might have 
they sell these boards, but these are the little pancake boards. So this is from Shammy. And this is not a this is not a can or USB board. It's just a, a breakout board. All it does is take a cable and then break it out to these individual connectors. So we'll be mounting that on, I think, this right here. Yeah, this part right here. And then that gets mounted to the printer. Oh, I don't have the standoffs for it. I should probably print those. We're going to be experimenting a little bit with this tool head because I've never... I've never built this configuration. It'll be tap with this board, with this extruder. It'll be fun. Is that just an extruder or extruder hot end combo? Um, this is an extruder. So this is what you call a, a BMG gear extruder. There's many varieties of these. They just take a, a set of BMG gears and then reconfigure them. One of my favorite BMG gear extruders is actually Clockwork 2. I like how you can unlatch the tension, slide your filament in, and then relatch it uh, without having to pull the hold the lever to load filament. It just goes off or on. That's one of my favorite things. And then there's also, I don't know if the, what is it, the Galileo 2 standalone? I don't know if that has a latch in the standalone edition. I'll have to look into that for a future build. But we can potentially put one of those on here, I think. But stock, the stock build for the West 3D kit will come with a set of BMG gears and you can use whatever configuration you'd like. If you don't want to build an extruder, I will say this piece right here is the most critical when it comes to getting good quality prints. Hot in, eh, matters a little bit, but the extruder, this is what really drives your, your quality. The consistency of your extrusion all lies around here. And if you do not print this or install it correctly, you will run into issues. So if you're not comfortable with that, I generally recommend a uh, Orbiter 2. So that is the extruder that is on the Rook right here. And I have it on a bunch of my other printers. So that's just a plug and play extruder. It comes pre-assembled. And that'll work perfectly fine with this as well. So one of those two options. All right, so what's next? Um, I have never installed this. This is, this is a boop board. Yeah, um, I might have to print some parts out. So let's, let's just take a look at the, oh, what are these components right here? I have no idea. Let's just take a look at all the parts I have. Put this on the floor. Zoom in. It would have been nice if I had an experience with tap before this, but I don't. So this is it's experimenting on my side. Uh, don't take this as pure instruction. Take this as me trying to learn what the heck is going on. Do, do as I say, not as I do. In this case, maybe not even do as I say. Let's see. So this is the this is the piece that gets mounted to zoom in a little. That gets mounted to the to the rail on the printer. And that's where the belts gets tied the belts get tied off. I have these little pieces here to attach on here. I think. Where does that go? I think here, here, how the heck do those go? Um, hmm. I don't know, but those little belt clip things that hold the belts into place, uh, maybe on this side, one of the two sides that hold the belt in. We have a spacer. I, I don't know if that's needed. We have the receiving end of the of the boop. So you can see there's a cutout here. This is where the rail goes. And this is where the carriage is going to go. And that should slide up and down like that. And then our, our uh, dragon burner is going to mount to here. 
Do I need any heat sets on here? It looks like I might need two heat sets on this. I'm gonna look at the CAD off screen, which I think I messed up a little bit. Ugh. But let me just pull the um, pull the CAD up. Does not have a latch. Okay, so the 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 Galileo two does not have a latch. Good to know. Let's see. So let's take a let's take a look at this right here. So this is how it's going to look. Uh, we're not using a uh, end stop, but if we were, that's where it would be installed. We're going to using sensorless. Now I don't have what is this? Is this like a sequin? Is this for lights? What what is what is this for? What is this part? I have no idea. Oh, magnets? Center left. What is that part? Because I don't think I have that printed. I don't think I have it printed. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, allegedly magnets go here. This slides up and down. Doesn't come off like that. Oh, what is this? He has a long screw that goes through the whole thing. Is that present online? Do I have that? Yes, yes it does. I think that adds rigidity to it by having that long screw. Okay, there is a... Is that a heat set? Oh, that's weird. So they use a heat set as a spacer. Interesting. That's kind of cool. Heat set as a spacer. Um, and then this acts as a... a so the, the whole thing doesn't fall off. Okay. I get that. Um, there's the front right here. So let's see, I will need heat sets right here and here. Let me turn on my little iron, put those in. Uh, where do those go? That goes like that. Uh, this is a screw that gets screwed up into what? <laughs> oh, geez. I don't know what that gets screwed up into. Maybe it just screws there? No. I had it assembled and I started taking it apart. Okay, so that screws into here. Okay, this piece right here. Gotcha. So that piece, does that have a heat set? Yeah. This is the, these black pieces are where the, um, the actual sensor mounts. So there's two different versions of it. Um, I am using the, the PCB version because I have a clicky PCB. If you're just tuning in, we are working on the Micron Plus beta build. Right now, we're kind of looking for the first time at Boop and how Boop works. AKA, how the heck do I build this thing and install it? So what is what is going on here? This is what I'm confused about. What is this part? Boop, center, optical? Hmm. Like, there's a big open void, and it doesn't look like it's a part that I printed. So I'm wondering... What the heck I need to print for that part? Um, there's Micron. There's the boop assembly. Let me let me pull up the boop. The boop branch. So right here we have STL. So clamp, I just printed that. Uh, those are the two end pieces, and this front, upper PCB, then wired. Let's see. Not that piece. Not that piece, and not that piece. Hmm. So I, I don't know what part that is. Just a little bit confused. Do you print two parts the magnets go into? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Uh, let's check the beta 3 and see if there's additional parts for that. 
Um, magnet carrier. Mm. Okay, yeah, there's a magnet carrier. Interesting. So beta four doesn't have the magnet carriers. Yeah, okay, that's that's the issue. Okay, so I'm guessing that they're the same thing as three. Or I can go here and export them. But I, I don't know if these are scaled correctly. So I can go here and export them from the CAD. But I'll probably do is just export them from beta three. We're here. We'll go and get um, both of those downloaded and then printed. All right, that shouldn't be too long. By the time we get all the heat sets in, they'll probably be done. But I think that's it. That's physically all the parts that go to the to the printer or to the uh, tool head. So that's pretty exciting. I'd, I'd love to see how that works. Unfortunately, we won't be able to test this out until I get the wiring harness. There's a custom harness being created for this kit. So I have to wait until that comes uh, in. But right now I'm working more on like the physical motion and the BOM parts. And, you know, seeing what's needed for Boop. Let's already have that up there. So there's a spacer too. Let's see where the... The spacer goes if if needed. Uh, what are these called? Did I download them yet? I don't think so. Magnet holder. Now, does the polarity of the magnets matter? I'm guessing the magnets are what? What are the magnets for? Are they for detection? I honestly haven't really done much with or done much research on top. Blair doesn't matter. Okay. So I'll get those two printed. I'm not even going to use bed leveling and then send it to the bamboo. Uh, let's print it in. Let's do the West 3D color C1. Okay. Send it. They hold the tool head until it breaks away. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, is there a four magnet version on the on the boop though? Right, like this is a very small, lightweight tool head. So I'm guessing that it's been kind of optimized for that. Alright, so going back into here. Uh, so I need a heat set there. And then Dragon Burner mounts directly onto here. So I'm, I'm familiar with how that mounts. That is pretty typical. So we should be able to, to go and start assembling it then. So let's start with... Um, okay, so the magnets, magnets also get glued in. Was that a screw or a magnet? What goes in here? Oh, okay, so... You need a, oh, interesting. So you have a countersunk screw that the magnet attaches to here. Then this one just gets a magnet. Is that how that works? I'm guessing so. And the belt clamps go on the smooth side. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. So what can I do to to get the belts mounted. What do I need for that? Do I need anything specially assembled? Uh, looks like on here, there is a screw that allows positioning of the magnet. That's probably, I could probably do that while it's on it. I already have these two heat sets in, so I can go ahead and just screw this part right here to the gantry without any issue. And I'll have to do that before installing this rail anyway. So let's start with that. Let's start with that. And I'm very expecting to take this apart and and change some stuff up. That's fine. 
This is more of an experimentation slash documentation build, more or less than a guide. But hopefully you learn some tips and tricks from it. So let's push over to the zoomed in view. And show you what's up. Through a steel of magnets attracted to it. Oh, okay, okay. That's that makes sense. But I'm guessing that the magnets would like stick to each other. Oh, it slides up and down. So okay, all right. We'll see. This is gonna be fun. So the first thing we're gonna do is take this this backplate. So this is a a boop version four backplate. It gets mounted like this onto here. So all we do is run our belts. So this is important. Put all your belts in place. So this one goes into here. It's a tight fit, which is fine. Yeah, that one goes in there. This is why you want a little bit of extra slack. So you have enough room to to get this initial part in. And you never want to cut your belts too short because it's so much easier to do something like this with the belts in a longer uh, position. Wow, this is quite tight. Interesting. Again, it should be good that it's tight, but it's kind of hard to press through. Okay, so those are all in. Before you go any further, make sure that every single belt pulley position is in place. So get this nice and tight. Get nice and tight. And just make sure that all of the belts are where they where they should be. What just fell? What was this? Where did that screw come from? <laughs> Random screw fell out? Oh, the bottom one on here. Interesting. Um, I never tightened that, did I? Okay. Okay, it's in the... I don't know if I can tighten it in this position. But I'll leave it kind of loose for now. I don't think I ever fully tightened this gantry because I haven't assembled it yet. This looks like it can be used on a rook. Um, With boop and tap, you have to have a, a severely rigid gantry. So uh, I would not advise using it on a rook because the gantry is not rigid and you can't have a can't sleeve your bed either. You have to have a really, really stable bed. So if you have a tri Z, uh, you know, rook, potentially, yeah, with a stable gantry. I've seen some people do it. Okay, so I'm making sure that all my belts are on the correct idlers. That looks good. And that everything's smooth. I can kind of hold this in place and then move the gantry back and forth. It should feel smooth. Right now it's not tight enough, so it's skipping. So let's kind of get it tight. Move it back and forth. Make sure that motion's good. And then take this tool head. If you can, move it back and forth. Make sure the motion is smooth. That's the first kind of sanity check. Yeah, Dragon Burner works on a Rook. Um, I have one on my Rook 2020 and I love it. All right, so that's like that. Um, the next step is to get the belts the same length. So start on one side and then pull the, the teeth through. You might have to take the other side and loosen it. But start with one side and make make both of these the same length. I'll preface that both of these belts before you install them should be the same length. Um, all I did was I installed the Z belts. I took what was left cut in half and that's this is how much is left over. So it's just enough. Don't get too much extra for the Z belts. Make them a little bit longer, but these are excessively long for what they need to be because you want some wiggle room when it comes to here. So right now it looks like I am one off, so I'm going to loosen 
this one a couple, and then tighten this so that it's preferably the same. So yeah, right there, it looks like the same length. So I'm gonna tie these off. So using one of the, oh, does I need a heat set there? Do I need a heat set there? Hold on, let me see. Is that a heat set or is that a nut? Is that a heat set or a nut? It looks like a, a square nut. Okay, so I need to insert a, a square nut behind here. Uh, preferably before I get the belts in place. So I'm just going to loosen up this side right here. Just so I can flip it up. And then a square nut needs to go here and here. Not square, sorry. Um, a standard M3 nut. Hexagon. That goes in like that. Sometimes heat sets aren't used because there's just not enough room for them. And this is one of those circumstances, I believe. For really thin areas, regular nuts are used. They're just not ideal because they can fall out. And, you know, you don't want to do that. You don't want them to fall out. So that's on there. Good. So let's put this back into place. Like that. And then make sure that these are the same length still. They are. And then we'll screw this in. Probably with a... Oh, man. I don't... I might have to use my own fasteners for this because I don't know... I have a kit right here, but I don't know what fasteners are going to ship with the with the boot version. So let's see what I have in this little kit. M3x16, uh, M3x20, M3x50, okay. Uh, M3x6, okay, these are my black oxide steel. Uh, these, I'm guessing that these are for the magnets, so the magnets will get attracted to that. I also believe that Boop tries to use as much as the BOM as a regular tap. We have some hex nuts. We have some washers. We have some M3 by six, only three of them. Sock ahead, countersunk. Countersunk? What's the CS stand for? Never know. All right, we have M3 by 12. Heat set inserts, M3 by 6 button head, M3 by 12, and M3 by 8 button head. So, quite a bit. Uh, luckily, in the CAD, I can just click a screw and it should tell me what it is. So, this screw right here is um, hardware M3 by 6 uh, button head. So, that's pretty easy. Go in the CAD. Click one of the screws, and then you go down and and see. I usually upload the stuff to Onshape. It makes it easier for me. So M3 by 6 to screw that in. And that's typical for... Uh, for um, this type of... If you're screwing something in that's really, really short, uh, M3 by 6 is used. A typical 3D printed part to part is M3 by 8. That's what I've noticed. So we are going to grab the this little spacer thing, insert this, and then lock our belt in place. Uh, I haven't even attached this to the to the rail yet. It's just kind of floating. So we're gonna do this first because once we screw this onto the carriage, we won't really be able to pull the belts because that the it also kind of traps them in. See if this will work or if it's gonna push the M3 out of the way. Uh let's see. I don't know if our M3 is uh, the the nut is pressed in enough. It's just not. Yeah, it's not pressed in enough. Okay. It's pressed in a little more. There's just barely enough to to have this go in. It might even be worth screwing in one of the screws into here. Just to hold it in place. What size is that? Was that also a six? Yeah, I'm three by six. So 
So just to help hold this thing in place, I'm going to screw one of these in temporarily and I'll do it on this side. Okay. Oh, and those parts are already printed. <laughs> when you don't do bed loving on the bamboo, it's reasonably quick. But if it's a tiny, tiny part, I don't do bed leveling. Actually, I don't, I don't know if it stores a previous bed bed level profile. No idea. All right, so that goes on like this. So screw that in nice and tight. But it doesn't have to be super tight because we're just... It's just to hold these belts in place. But you want you want a screw like this tight enough so it doesn't get loose. Uh, if it gets loose, then you'll have rattling bolts and nuts. And then, ugh, it sounds like... It sounds bad when the printer is going. So we have one side on, both these belts are the same. So we're gonna repeat that process for the other side. So all I'm gonna do is just pull these tight. So pull them reasonably tight. And now this is the last chance you get to check and make sure every single belt is on an idler and that it runs smooth. So it looks like they are from here. Looks like everything is lined up. So let's just take this and and move it back and forth. We shouldn't have any slipping. It should be nice and smooth. Okay, a, fair, a little bit of slipping, but that's because it's not properly tensioned yet. But that's fine. So for this, I'll try to get them the same length. I don't know if these are exactly the same length belts. But we can also use our, our tensioner, our belt tensioner, to guess, guesstimate. So let's do that. So I want to put this onto here. And this is around 1.9. And then put it over here. And we are very low. So this bottom one needs to be tensioned more. So let's do that. Get them pretty much the same to start. Uh, also, when you're doing this initial setup, Make sure that your front idlers are at their loosest possible setting, but still engaged. So let's see what they are now. Now we're at uh, roughly 1.9 and a little over 2. So we're going to loosen the top one by 1. Let's try again. Man, I love this tool. Now this is really loose. And you should like wiggle the, you know, the, the belt back and forth just to make sure everything is aligned. So that's at one and that's at like one. So they're, they're both the same, but they're a little loose. So let's get it one, one belt further in each or one tooth, so one tooth in that one. And then let's see if I can get one tooth in this bottom one. Also a good time to make sure that the actual gantry itself is straight. Right now it doesn't look straight. That's because the belts weren't the same tension. Um, it's very important to make sure your core XY belts are at the same tension because that's what controls the how slanted this is. If one of them is too tight and one of them is too loose, this whole bar will be angled and you won't get square prints. So that's why on the Z, it's not as critical to get them tensioned correctly. As long as they're all kind of the same. But on, on your Core XY belt path, it is critical to get them very close. So I'm going to put this in and then we're going to double check the belt tension. And of course, we're going to get a final belt tension with these front tensioners, but we want to get it ballpark. Let's see if the, we should have checked and see if we can uh, actually screw this in first. Because it looks like we might not be able to. All right. And that, if that's the case, I'm going to cheat and just grab one of these screws and screw it in. Um, uh... Is it even, is the nut even in there? Oh, it's the nut is like 
falling out on the other side. Okay. Oh, that's fun. Again, heat sets would be ideal here, but I don't think they physically fit, so they weren't able to be included. Let's get this nut back in place. Press it in as much as I can by hand. There we go. Looks better. And then try to get this piece screwed back in. Um, let me hold this in place using one of these screws again. Seemed to help out a little bit last time. Okay, and try this again. If possible, I'd love to see a, a heat set on this part, but I'm guessing it's not, not the easiest to do. Yeah, no, that's not right, Let's try this one more time, see if we can get anything screwed in. If not, we'll take it apart. Oops. Okay, so I'm screwing this in, it's in, and I'm just going to tighten up the screw to pull the nut as far, far forward as I can. Unscrew this. And then screw this part in. That's kind of a trick to, to get these um, nuts set correctly. And now they are. Now we have our, our nut in place. And we're able to screw this little bracket on. So far, this is one of, one of the easiest tensioners that I've used. I like how these slip into place. And there's no zip ties. That looks pretty nice. Which brands do you believe generally respect and support the 3D printing community? That's a great question. Uh, honestly, at the end of the day, I don't know. Um, and I'm not going to name any names because there are a lot of brands that I truly think are good. Uh, I think everyone has room for improvement, though, when it comes to like, social media and... A lot of things. Uh, right now we're at around 1.1 1 .1 on a little under 1.1 1 .1 here. And I think around the same thing here. So that one's a little bit less. So this bottom one could probably use one tooth extra. Uh, my goal is to try to get the both of these tension correctly. Or the same before we go to these. That means that they're... The belts are the same length and that's not super super critical but it helps with uh, calibration so i'm going to take this bottom belt and then pull it one one tooth more and then screw this back in uh, if ideally i would have measured out both of these belts to be the same exact length and then just make them the same length and then call it a day Let's see if this is uh, any better. So that's screwed in. I'm going to give this a nice back and forth. Put this in the center and then rerun that test. So this one is, I'm wiggling around a little around like one pound. And then this one right here is around uh, one. Okay, so those are more or less the same. Uh, it ended up being like, Actually, yeah, same, actually the same length. So I had these belts the same length and now the same length on both sides. So yeah, there you go. So I confirm that when the belts are the same length, they'll be the same tension. Yay. Okay, next is cutting the belts. I generally don't recommend cutting your belts unless you absolutely have to. Uh, but in this circumstance, we need to be able to move this all the way over so we need to be able to cut these belts um, so they're, you know, it's hard because I don't want to cut them super short, but I might have to. 
In this circumstance, I think reinstalling the belts would be fairly easy to do. So I'm just going to cut them both so they stick out a few teeth and see if that interferes. Let's see, where's my side cutters? So let's cut it, uh, I don't know, we'll start with like, with like this amount. Right here. Both the same. Because when it hits this side, you know, the belts, they have to go somewhere. And I think that'll be perfect, like that. Let's do about the same right here. This is always the like cringy part is cutting the belts too short and then you realize oh my god it's too short then you have to rerun your whole entire set of belts again <laughs> but that should be fine so here we go um, i can trim the shorter if needed but that's good enough for now we'll we'll call it and we can tell that the the tensions are pretty much the same because it hits the side almost almost uh, at the same position. So this side right here has a little bit of play. That just means that um, this side needs more tension to square it up. So we'll do with the whole s squaring and tightening after um, this is assembled. But right now we have this on right here. So let's see what's next. I printed off those two little magnet carriers right here. So let's check the CAD and see see what's up uh so we'll have to screw in the this part onto the rail right so we had to screw that part on uh this part on right here and then it looks like we mount our our magnets so So we need one of these. This is a, a M3 by 10 with a washer. So that's going to screw into the side of here. I don't think there's a heat set. Oh, there is a heat set. Okay. Yeah. So you need a heat set on this part right here, as shown by there. So two heat sets. Into these parts. And again, you can kind of tell once you've made enough print <laughs> 3D printed parts, you can tell and say, oh yeah, that's totally a hole for a heat set. They kind of have a look to them. Uh, this one I'm just going to do by hand because the, there's a hole at the bottom. I think it would go right through. I'm just going to put this in by hand and be extra careful. Oh, it's off. Okay, well, let's let it heat up. So we have that in there. And then, so the magnets. Um, am I gluing the magnet into here or am I just pressing it in? Does anyone know? I should have some magnets from this kit. I might have taken them out already. Magnets. Oh, yeah, the magnets are over here. So we'll see how well they press in. Chances are they do just press in, but we'll see. So if magnets are here, just snap them to the side of this rail. All right, that's up the temp. I strongly encourage getting a, a soldering iron that you can set the temperature to just for consistency. Because once you find the temperature that works for your heat set, you just set it to that, you wait, and then it goes off. This one kind of beeps at you when it's ready. Mm, it's nice. So that's in there. As always, we're gonna let the heat sets cool down for a second to form the, the bond. Uh, let me see what else I need to put in for heat sets. So this one right here, do I need any heat sets? Maybe here, let's double check the, the CAD. So that is this part. Um, yeah, I need heat sets into these two holes right here. I like to go so the heat set is just under 
or so it looks like the, the heat says just under the top of the surface. You want it to be flush or a little bit more than flush. You never want a heat set sticking out under normal operation. But you also don't want it pressed in so much extra because sometimes the screw is sized perfectly for the uh, for the heat sets. So that's in there. It looks like all right, that's a built-in built-in support. It just breaks off. I love built-in supports, not having to ever wonder if something is a support or not. Oh yeah, these are these are built-in supports. It almost looks like, you know when you do a make a 3D print and it skips the whole entire layer and then you can just peel it apart? That's kind of what built-in supports do. It skips a layer and then everything just peels apart. And it always comes out so much smoother than, than using supports. I don't know why. That looks good. Those are M3. This gets a... Looks like it gets a, a nut. What well, gets screwed into there? What am I looking at here? Um, not a nut. Oh no, a magnet goes in there. This is where a screw goes in. Okay, it looks like it takes a nut, but it takes our our little screw instead. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I'll leave that alone for now. Um, I have the spacer. I'm still not sure where that would go. No idea. But it looks like it might fit somewhere up here. Like right here. We'll I'll have to see after. So that's our, those are in for heat sets. Uh, what is this part? I will not be using this part because I have... So the differences between the two styles. These are both the same part, um, but the blue one has the the extra supports that come with Dragon Burner 8. So that's the main difference. It has those bottom supports, so it's a lot more rigid. So we're using that one. So, let's play around with the actual magnets now. So I have these little these little parts here and I'm going to insert a magnet and see if it fits in snug which it probably will by the looks of it. Like, I don't know if I should be gluing these in. I'm actually just going to put it on the table and press it into... Press it into it. So let's take one of these magnets and then just put it on the table. Doesn't matter what the orientation is at this point. And then press this into here. Okay, so that presses in nice and firm. Uh, it's actually like a perfect fit. So let's do the same thing for the other side. We'll grab one magnet. If it does come out, we can glue it. But I'd rather not permanently glue a magnet in, because I have to remove it. But it feels like the perfect fit. It goes in, um, and it feels like it's it's not coming out. Are these the same polarity? Now they're opposing. You want to press them in extra, you just put two opposing magnets next to each other, and that'll really force into place. <laughs> All right, so I have those two parts there, and then those will attach to the part we already installed. I would recommend looking up a guide on how to do this if you're honestly trying to build this. Uh, as you can see, I kind of have an idea what I'm doing, but at the same time, I don't. Oh, I can't even lift this gantry by hand. That's how tight this whole thing is. I can't physically move it up by hand. Ugh, God. It's, it's even more stable than the 2.4 gantry. I don't get it. It has less of a gear reduction.
Eh, good enough. You don't know if it makes a difference for boop, but Vorn doesn't recommend build filament for tap. Oh, really? A filled filament. Only standard ABS, ASA, or carbon fiber. You mean like, like nylons? Like, don't use nylon? Yeah, I'm just using standard ABS for these parts. Okay, so this part goes in like that. I'm guessing that's the correct side because it fits perfectly. Um, no, uh, is it? No, it's the other side because the the heat set right here faces in. There we go. So the heat set is on the inside of the part. Those two go in there. Then we need to grab our M M3 by 10. Is that in here? I get about 500 bags of different sized screws at this point. Uh. Did this one come with an M3x10? It doesn't matter, I can use my own, but I'm guessing that TAP doesn't use the same exact BOM as Boop. Do I have any M3x10s? If not, yeah, I'm just going to go into my personal stash. No big deal. That's what I have extra parts for. Once you get the profile down, you're going to reprint uh, part of the Voron hot ends and polycarbonate. There are some pretty cool PC blends. I don't know a lot about them. Oh my god, I'm out of, I'm out of M3 by 10s. <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> That's actually very convenient. Uh, let's see if I have some. I probably do somewhere. Let me take a quick look in my my parts bin. While I'm doing that, uh, how are you guys enjoying this build today? If you're watching this live on YouTube. Um, I'm just reminding you because you forgot to hit that like button. And I'm going to pause until you hit it. All right. Thank you for hitting that, smashing that like button. It really helps uh, discoverability. You think that it, it wouldn't really matter, but yeah, it does. And... The more people that are able to see this, well, chances are I'll be able to help more people. So that is the idea. As I look for these M uh, M10s. Okay. Well, can I use can I use a different size or style of fastener for here? I probably can. Yeah, I'm just gonna use a, a button head or a socket head for now. Because I can't seem to find my... Oh, unless they're in... Those are black. I don't want to see all the V0... V0 parts. <laughs> Not doing that yet. Uh, M3 by 10. So, note to self. Uh, if you're watching this in the VOD, remind me to buy some more button head... <laughs> M3 by 10s. There we go. So this takes one, one washer on the end of it, probably to get it to be the right length and to allow for um, the right contact so we can slide it back and forth. So we're going to take this in and we're going to screw it into place and I'm going to start with it all the way back. I think that makes sense. So start with it all the way back. Then put the other one on the other side. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. When you're watching the uh, the re-upload on YouTube. Oh, I need the uh, washer as well. Don't forget it. No, push that all the way back. And then I'm noticing how loose this is. We only have one of those screws in place. So let's get the rest of those screwed in.
and 3 by 6. And 3 by 6. Crazy. On the... So this is an MGN9 rail right here. But the rest of them are MGN7. And they use an M2 screw to hold it in place. And that is the wildest thing to me. It's how small the fasteners are for MGN7. Why is that not screwing in? Why is that not screwing in? Uh... Excuse me, sir. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Uh, I might have an issue here. <laughs> that is for the wrong, the wrong size carriage. Oh, well, that's awkward. <laughs> Uh, so this must be for, I don't know, full, wait, is that like an MGN 12? See the, see the issue here, right? Well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> oh no. So, uh, let's see. Let's go back into the the boop files and see. Um, what what did I mess up here? So STL. So these are the two. Two parts. So those are identical. So yeah, apparently this is designed... Wait, that can't be. That can't be designed for... Oh, is it for an H carriage? Is that why? Oh. Interesting. Is it the right distance up and down? It looks like it's it's all the way too big. No, it's, it's too big in all directions. Is it? Let's see. Let's see if I can screw this in. But yeah, uh, I guess is stock an H? Okay, yeah. All right, you're you're 100 correct. Um, I need a uh, H carriage. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. That is fine. Let me make a note of that real quick. Make a note. So small, small setback, but I think we're going to carry on. Good night, Pete. So all I'm going to do for now, uh, note that this will not be the final assembly, but just for installation purposes, I'm going to just have it screwed in with two screws. So for the full rigidity of the setup, you'll need all four. But I'm, I'm curious how this goes together. Honestly, you probably you could probably get away with just two, <laughs> but do not do this if you can help it. So yeah, we'll get the we'll get the right rail for this. Make sure this still runs smooth. It looks like it's a little bit tight. Are these screwed in too much? All right, looks good. I think it might be off somewhere. No, it looks good. I guess the frame isn't square either. That doesn't really help. <laughs> cool. So that's what it would look like with the extra screws. That's fine. Now, 
now we can install our, oh, do we forget heat sets? Oh. Okay, now we can take this back apart because we forgot the, let me guess, nuts go behind the back of there. This is very much my first time building one of these. Yeah, shoot, we need more, more washers. Okay, so take this off and install more nuts. So you can, you can remove this once it's in place. You can kind of tilt it, but it's sometimes hard to get to specific things. So what goes in here? Okay, that one has a heat set. So it's just this top one, actually. Just this top screw. This one gets a... Uh, just a nut. And like I said earlier, that's because it's too thin of a part to get a heat set. Okay. So let's get that re-screwed in. That part in. I don't know when or how these long screws go in place, but we'll install those after I get this screwed on before I forget. This is pretty fun. Definitely new, and I think it's clear by watching this that I'm very new to this assembly, which is fun. Uh, it's the first time going through it, so this is exactly how I would expect to build it. Or expect you guys to do it. Alright, those long screws are... Um, M3 by 40. Those are button head. M3 by 40 button head. I don't think my kit came with those, but I should have... I should have some of those of my own. Alright, M3x40. So those are going to screw in on the top. And they should just kind of sit and probably thread into plastic. They're honestly like press in. And that adds extra rigidity to this whole setup. So the fact that we're, we're probing against here, we want this to be as rigid as possible. And I think this will also screw onto the carriage. Maybe. I don't know what it does, but... Definitely looks like it's helping. So we get these, and it, yeah, the the edge of it does kind of slide over the the carriage. So I don't know if that like. I mean, this this feels just with these two screws. This whole thing feels super super solid. Um, people are always asking if you should use a CNC part for this, and I think if assembled correctly. That's probably fine. And I think most people who've built one of these can agree with me. Next is the fun part. We have the cutest <laughs> mini rail. So this is West 3D's tap rail. Um, it is using their high preload rail. So it should be perfect for this setup. Where you don't want it to be... Um, you, you want it to be as rigid as possible. That's the goal. And yes, this is pre-lubed. It, it, it has some, some lube on there. I'm going to clean it up a little bit, just because it's a little messy. But that's fine. You want a lot of lube on here. So it's cool that they've pre-lubed that. Okay, we're just going to clean it up a little. But what's important is that the inside, all the balls are just heavily, heavily, heavily coated in lube. We want as smooth as possible for the setup. And lubricant does add a little bit of, uh, not stiffness, but like fluidity. Okay, do not drop this, by the way. It should hold itself in place fairly well, but do not drop this. <laughs> I think... I think there's a printed part that you should actually use to to install this with. You slide it off into another part and then you reinstall it. So what we're going to do is 
We can slide it off halfway and that's fine. Just be very careful when reinserting it that all the balls stay in place. So let's start with the, with the top one and we'll get that screwed in. And yeah, this is tiny, <laughs> absolutely tiny. Let's see. The top screw is a M3 by six uh, socket head, which I should have three of those. Are they all M3 by sixes? The second one's an M3 by 12. So M3 by six socket head. Okay, I have a couple of those. And feel free to comment if I've done any of this wrong. Uh, don't don't be afraid to in the comments. I would rather make a correction than have something installed incorrectly. All right, so the top one. <clears throat> Or do the bottom one first. No, we're going to do the top one, then the bottom one. So start at the top. Doesn't matter which, which side it is. Just make sure that it doesn't slide off. Uh, it shouldn't slide off under its own weight. It's a high enough preload where it'll just hang there. But yeah, just be kind of careful. Hold it if you can. So get this installed and get it real tight. Like this, you do not want loose. Give it a couple couple extra agadagas within the limits of the plastic. Okay, then this one, we're going to slide up just enough so we can access that hole. And it is covered in lube because they have lubed the heck out of that. Love to see that. Uh, that one, what do we say? It was a M3 by 12 socket head. I have some of those. Seems like a lot of fasteners for the for the tap kit. Was that like a whole stealth burner BOM? So this one's a heat set, so it shouldn't matter too much. Let's just get this in. Lube will kind of splatter out of the holes, and that's fine. But get that in nice and tight. Okay. Good enough. I'll have to disassemble this whole thing anyway. But actually, maybe I won't. Maybe I can just like keep this all assembled and then well i have to assemble it anyway this is more of the first installation um fun fun reminder or fun fun tip if you build something and take it out apart a bunch of times you'll get really good at building it so i don't recommend taking apart your printer putting it together a thousand times but hey Do what you gotta do. All right, so this one, this one's cool. So we're inserting a heat set on here. So we're gonna screw in this heat set, just like so, and use it kind of as a spacer. All right, so just like that. And then we're gonna screw this whole thing into here. Just like so. Nice and tight. Okay. Now this is going to act as a stop. So that can't slide down. Perfect. Now is a great time to double check to make sure you haven't like lost any of your ball bearings. But that is installed. So that's cool. And it only, wow, it only goes up like that much. Apparently there's this much travel in the whole setup. That's it. That's why it's so short of a rail. Cool. Keep an eye on the balls. Yep. All right, next. Next, we install um, the back piece. So before we do that, we need to do a few things. Let's get this down. All right. Let's just get this on right here. And we are going to grab the screw 
screws for those. Yeah, these screws, we have the magnets, okay. So right here, we have this part. And in these two holes, we're gonna screw in some of these black oxide steel screws. So these do attract magnets, hopefully, because they're steel. And they're small, are they two millimeter? Yeah, okay, two millimeter. So let's take this and screw them in all the way. It's right in the plastic, so I don't know how far that is. Don't over screw them though, because you're just screwing to plastic. And I believe the magnets will stick out. So I believe they should be just like ever so slightly in. So then we put the magnets in, they'll kind of stay in. And we have to get the polarity of, of the magnets. So we kind of just guessed when we installed those uh, in. Oops, let me zoom in a little. All right. We guessed. So I'm just going to place the magnets against those and drop it on the ground. Ah, oh, these magnets are hard to separate. Okay. So I'll put one magnet here and one magnet here. Then I'm gonna hold up this piece, how it goes, like this, and then take one of these magnets, and without changing the direction, I'm gonna put it against here, just like that. And same thing for that one. I'm gonna hold it, and without changing direction, put it on here. So now, that goes all like that. Just magnets right to it. Cool. Um, I'm guessing here, so it looks like we can screw into there. Those are in place. That gets screwed in. That gets screwed in. So now we can screw in this piece. That printed... <laughs> yes, that's printed for the correct carriage. <laughs> uh, three by six. Um, I, it was mentioned that a new rail will be sent to me for this, but I wanted to get it installed. I just didn't realize it was going to be the wrong, uh, the wrong size. So that's on, that's on me. I'm not 100% familiar with the cat on this. But after this, I'm definitely more familiar. Way more familiar. So if anyone needs help with this, of course, you can reference the official Discord. But uh, I might be able to answer a few questions here or there. So let's get this lined up. So it's pushing the rail down so the screw line up. So let's put a couple of them, one of them in each corner, loosely. Okay, then tighten them. Get these nice and tight. I don't want any play in this part. And I might have to assemble the whole thing because I forgot something. But we'll see. Looks like, I don't know, we'll see if this top part needs to be installed first. Okay, so that goes in like that. And now, let's see. Oh, wow. Wait a minute, what's it getting stuck on? Oh, cool. Cool. So you see right, right here. Let me get this focused better. Right, right here. See that? That side part keeps the, the the travel goes from max to min travel. So that's that's as much as it can go. Um, and the magnet is doing a really good job of holding it in place when it's not in. It like forces its way back down. Like it snaps in place. That's awesome. Wow. So it feels it feels decent, about as solid as a regular mount would be. And the belts aren't even tensioned yet, so I gotta do that. But, well, I'm not to disassemble it, probably. Cool! I like that. That's, that's exciting. Alright, next we have the top part. Uh, this one I might need to shave down the part a little bit. 
So let's see, I have my cutters. So this is not technically, well, I don't know. I'm using OptoTap Rev 2.4.1 board. This just came in my little tap kit. But this will go just like, just like this. And I'm noticing that with this PCB and the stock printed part, there's a bit of a wiggle. So all I'm going to do is trim this center part right here back a little. Just like that. Just like that. So then this part will go in and then sit flush. And this is the actual sensor that's going to sense the whole thing. Now the question is, um, does this have to be installed first? <laughs> or can we get it installed after the fact? Let's see, so that gets installed like, like so. Yeah, it looks like we can install it after the fact. So let's get the heat sets in for that. So far, seems like it's going good. Everything feels correct, which is good. You know when you install something, it just doesn't feel correct. Like, yeah, this this should be adjusted or changed, or I'm doing it wrong. If you ever have that feeling, just stop and <laughs> figure out the situation. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe the design's wrong. Most time, it's probably you doing something wrong. Or done something in incorrect order, you know. Lots of options. I just always guess that I'm doing it wrong because other people have tested it. I do find bugs here and there though. So this will, oh, cool, cool. Yeah, so that, okay. This will screw in like this. And then this part will screw into the back of the dragon burner. Wow, this is gonna be a nice, a nice setup when we're done. Hey, Kit Skyfire, welcome in. Welcome, welcome. So that gets screwed in with a um, M3 by 16 socket head. Got feeling, yeah, right, right. You have that feeling that hmm, something's a little bit off here. That's why belt tensioning is usually done by by feel because it usually just feels right. So we need to screw this in. Um, do I need to screw this in first? No, that can be done after the fact. How do you guys like this view? Is this working out for you? The zoomed in view of the printer? Try my best to keep my, my hands and stuff out of the frame. Okay. Um, my, my gantry needs to go up. So I'm going to Ugh, force it up. Oh, it's so it's so hard to move this gantry by hand, which is a really good thing. That means that the gantry is not going to sag under its own weight. Okay. Give me some extra room to install this. This just goes in like so. This will provide even more stability to the whole thing. Okay. Goes in perfect. Before fully tightening, let me put this other one in. So this is, again, where the, uh, the PCB is going to mount. Or I guess you can get this whole thing without a PCB, but make sure you're picking up the correct, the correct sensor and correct kit for what you're trying to do. Um, this one comes with a little extension right here. So that'll be perfect for, uh, crimping and terminating onto our little PCB. Let's get this installed. It's really, really taking a lot of turns to get that in. 
but we want this as a nice tight fit. Everything in tap should be tap and boot should be really, really well, well screwed in. There we go. This is going to add even more stability. I love it. Uh, what's the back here? Oh no, that's okay. That's where this gets installed. So in the back here, the PCB gets installed with. Uh, M3 by 8 button head. I have a thousand of those. Let me just use those. Go. That just screws into the plastic. It's not critical that, uh, well, actually, it sort of is critical that the position stays stays the same and i might need to install this piece after attaching it though i'm gonna note that because of how this rear hole is accessed so i'm just going to screw this in a little bit well i guess i'm screwing it all the way but i'll screw it in now knowing that i'll probably have to remove it i just want to make sure that it went in correctly Now is a good time to mention that if you'd like to support these uh, streams or this channel, I do have merch. The shirts look like this. I have a couple of different varieties. Um, these are the softest shirts that you will probably ever own. Extremely comfortable. Um, I have a couple of other different merch items, so make sure to hit up the merch store in the video description. If you're on Twitch, you can do a bang merch and chat to get to my store. And all the proceeds for that go straight back into the channel so I can buy supplies and pay for the lights to, to run this place. There we are. Cool. So I think that's it for boop. That's pretty much it. Now we have our standard mounting points for a dragon burner. So Dragon Burner has two main mounts. Um, you're going to screw into the front, into here, three main mounts actually. So these two right here, you screw into from the front. So you see the, the holes right here, those will screw in. This middle section up here actually gets screwed in behind. I should have the top, here we go. So on your, on your extruder mount, or your, yeah, your street amount like that, there is this little tri um, uh, not triangle, but angled piece. And that will index perfectly into here, just like that. And this takes a, a nut. I don't know if it's supposed to be a square nut or hexagonal nut, but it uh, takes a nut. Probably a square nut would be optimal for that. Yeah, like, uh, like this. So a square nut into there. And then that gets screwed in from behind, right here, there's a little hole. That just adds extra rigidity. It's not required, but definitely helps out. And then on the, the new Dragon Burner, there's these little wings. And those get screwed in from behind into the bottom section there. So I need to put some heat sets on that. And this whole thing needs a couple of heat sets. So I'll put those in now. But so far, it's going, going good, I feel. I'm enjoying it, and that's all that matters. So after, well, what's left? So the whole tool head, not really much more. Install the hot end, the the extruder, and then install the PCB and get that all wired. I'm probably gonna do it off stream because um, wiring and stuff is uh, will vary kit to kit. I'll show you the ending result, but I've shown many times how I wire stuff, and I'll just kind of go over it briefly. But 
after that, that's the main printer. We have the, the Z, A, B, all ready to go. So the next step is just wiring. So I'm waiting on a wire for this. I'll show you that when that comes in. But this is pretty much going to be a pause of this build until I get some additional parts. And I'm going to be switching over to one of the other builds. Let's see. Oh, that actually, <laughs> this uh, Dragon Burner also has additional holes here for more supports. Every iteration, they keep adding more and more and more rigidity. So Dragon Burner 8, version 8. That's the current version. Um, it's pretty damn good. I love how you can just mount Dragon Burner directly on a Trident now. Awesome. So that goes in like that. Perfect. Okay. And then I'll need uh, heat sets in the bottom of the... The hot end mount. So you've been seeing me use this. I have a link in the description, but this is the Stealth Press by Iconic Fab. And it is very nice. It was a fun build. I actually had most of the components on hand to build it. Um, but I'd recommend picking up a kit and building one yourself. Also, there's the Vertical Linear Motion Press, which a lot of people have used. That one's by Vector 3D. Another option if you want to build your own little heat set press. But if you're building more than one printer, it's definitely worth getting this set up. I think it is. Just because there's so many, so many heat sets and all these things. So that's it for now for heat sets. So let's get this assembled. So pretty easy. Um, do you want me to install the... Yeah, let's do the hot end. So for this build, we are using a Fetus Rapido. Uh, just the standard high flow. So that looks like this. So when you get it, it comes with the with the hot end and some short wires. We're going to end up cutting these and potentially crimping them. I don't know, though. We'll see. We'll have to see what the tool head board supports. But this comes with a, a few nozzles. A hardened steel. Uh, 0 0.4. Okay, interesting. Hardened 0 0.4, and then a uh, allegedly a copper, a plated copper nozzle. So this one's more for performance, and then the hardened nozzle is for your abrasives. I would just throw on the, the copper one for now. It doesn't really matter. You can swap them out if needed. So on, on this extruder right here, or sorry, hot end. Um, this is currently set up with the groove mount. You do not want to use this. You want to take that off and then just uh, use the heat sink with uh, what's called the dragon style mount. Or at least that was the original mount for it. No, this is the official. This is the official West 3D kit. So they're including a uh, um, Rapido. This is version 2.0. I've used this on the Trident, and it is a very nice hot end. So far, it's been pretty reliable. Heat up time is incredible. Almost too good. So we're unscrewing this top part here. That comes off, and that exposes this mount right here. Standard, like, dragon-style mount. And this will mount onto uh, the bottom here. Just like that. So with Rapido, there's a bunch of different ways you can have this mounted. You see how on the block here, there is three screws. One, two, three. You can actually remove the screws and, and pivot this whole thing around. So you can really fine tune where the wires come out of this if needed. Um, I'm going to leave it stock, but note that if your wires are just awkward and you want them to come out a certain way, you can rotate this. Just make sure that these are screwed in enough. 
because they will back out. I almost recommend screwing them in under um, under heat. That's what uh, I've had the most luck with. So if you don't, if, if you can, just don't touch it. All right, so in that Rapido box, we should have some screws to mount it. We also have some extensions for standard insulation. Which I might use just to get this whole thing tested, but I'm not sure yet. Let's see. Do we have any screws in here? Do. Little black screws. They come in the bag. Don't lose them. Uh, it also comes with this thermal grease. This is because it's using a, a pad style heater in version 2 versus the, the CHC style heater in the previous version. I'll show you that in a second. I'm just going through all these components. It comes with a spare screw for your hot end mount. That's nice. And then all the mounting screws. Cool. So I'll put those back. So yeah, Rapido 2 has a um, has a, a flat style heater, kind of like what the what the bamboo uses. Just a slightly, I think, is it the same size or slightly larger? I don't know. It's pretty powerful. It's plenty, plenty powerful. Sock back on there, and I'll show you how this mounts. So, this is facing the back, so you want to have it just like this. I don't know yet. I'm just going to kind of guess, but we'll essentially just screw it in from the top, and I'm going to go over here and try to find the best orientation for this. So let's see, put those in my little hex tray. If you haven't yet, definitely print off one of these hex trays just for putting loose screws in. You can keep everything in the bags, but just being able to put something down without it rolling around, super useful. All right, so this is gonna, if I have it like this, the wires come out to the back almost straight. We'll see if that works out. See if that works out. I'm just gonna put two two screws in. Just uh, I'll put them all in. If just put all the screws in. If it's unique ones, just to store them. Go that awesome. And then I can test it. So that slides in on here and that comes up like that. So let's, let's see if that's going to cause an issue. Chances are it might. So better to know now. I might need to rotate the whole thing 90 degrees. Zoom in here. So right now I have it like this. So this part right here just indexes onto the front and slides in very easy, just like that. So I was worried that these are sticking out like that and that it might not have enough room. So let's see that screws in like that. And just as I imagined, yeah, it's, it's interfering with the part. So I'm going to have to rotate the. I'll start by just rotating the hot end 90 degrees with the standard mount. And if that doesn't work, then we're going to have to disassemble the, the whole thing and rotate them, which is not preferred, but uh, sometimes it has to be done. So fun fact while I'm doing this, um, this is the dragon burner tool head. And another part of the 
ecosystem, there's something called Rapid Burner. Rapid Burner allows for ultra high flow hot ends like the Rapido with the extender on there or Goliath or some of the other hot ends. Most of the time, you're probably going to be running a Rapido ultra high flow in that configuration, though. And I have one of those installed on one of my printers. And it's pretty nice. The coolest thing about the rapid burner versus dragon burner is that the, the nozzle position is the same on both. It just lifts the whole thing up. So you don't have to redesign your printer to account for the, the lower tool, you know, the lower, longer <clears throat> um, hot end. So now I have it angled the side. Let's see if this one is any better. So this slots in like this. I just push it off to that side. And now it's not able to go in easy. Um, so I don't know how I want to have it. Uh, there's this little metal part here and chances are I can just bend it down maybe. There's probably a specific way that it wants you to install this, and I'll have to look it up, but I could probably bend down this little, little metal part. This installed. Yeah, bend that down, then see. We want this to kind of slide in without issue, and right now there is an issue. So it's kind of pressing against the outside. We don't want that. I think it's close enough, though. I seriously do think it's just, just close enough, but it'll work for us. So I'll run with that for now. It's like that. It's probably the best I'll do. Alternatively, I could play around with these three screws and get it so it comes out in a slightly better position, but I'm going to run with that for now. So mounting is pretty simple. So this uses, let's see, I don't know what size screw. Is it 50? I don't think it's 50. 50 seems way too long. Yeah, 50 is way too long. I think it's 40 or 45 for Dragon Burner. Um, did, I, did the kit come with anything? That's a good question. Does the kit come with anything for that? Uh, so I have M3 by 40. We'll see if those, if those work. So that looks like it's too long. It sticks out way too much. So that all we're doing is sticking this into here. Um, so it might need to be M3 by 35, which I also have a lot of. When in doubt, just start longer and then work your way down. For this, I'm looking for it to just barely stick out of the end here, which I think this will be perfect. So sticking this through the front and yeah, that looks great. That looks correct. Maybe even a little shorter, but it has a little gap into the heat set, so that should be fine. Could be fine. Um, oh, there's another piece though. I don't know if that's required, but there's this little spacer, which would go right here. I don't know if it's required. Um, let me just fit it in and see. No, it's not required to, to sit up flush. So let's see if this will work. I'm just gonna screw it in and see if that wiring makes sense. So that screws into the back, straight to the front. That's the main thing that holds this uh, extruder into place. You technically only need two screws to hold it in. On the Rooks, I've only used two screws and it's been pretty stable. 
So that's what it is right there. Now the wires, they look from first glance decent. I should be able to route them in a decent way. So routing them up like this on the side almost looks perfect. I don't know if I can get this focused correctly. Let's see. There we go. So I, I actually think I can do this right here. Um, this still needs the fans. So the fans will slot into here before I install this. I haven't done that yet. I don't actually have the fans yet. I might have some I can borrow though. So those will go in there. But that looks kind of perfect. Almost too good to be true. Like perfect, perfect routing. And there's a little zip tie point right here. Awesome. So that'll be that. Then, the extruder. So, with this style of extruder, uh, Devise, thank you for the 12 months. Awesome. 12 month subscription on Twitch. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, whatever, whatever extruder you're using, you'll want to mount it appropriately. Whether it's a style that screws in first to here, and then down on, or the style that screws down from the top. <clears throat> Whatever style you go with, you'll use the appropriate mount. So for this one, it screws down from the top. My heat sets are in this bottom part. So this is just really a spacer that screws in like this. And then this will screw down into it. Now one thing to note, and I'll do this for the final version. There are two holes in the back here. And there's two heat sets on the very edge of here. Um, you'll want to install screws into that. <clears throat> In fact, we can do that right now. Uh, what size are those? Uh, maybe maybe 20 on 3 by 20 Also, I haven't installed the front fan either. None of the fans are installed, but that's just so I can show you what's going on here. Yeah, 20 millimeters looks perfect. So right here, that goes in like that. Oops, that squared up spell out, it's okay. So I'm gonna put that in just like this. This whole thing just slots right into place. Hopefully, like that. Then I can screw in from the back those pieces there and that adds extra rigidity to the whole setup uh, so I really like that some more stiffness just two screws adding a lot of extra stiffness um, I love it so where'd that square nut go <laughs> uh, it's somewhere it's somewhere isn't it uh, this this screw fell out again. Let's see if I can actually screw it in now. I'll have to lift the gantry up even further. That's okay. So that's in. And then this extruder. Um, I will need a PTFE tube. So you'll have to put a, a PTFE in here. Cut it to length. I can actually do that now. This comes with way too much PTFE, like an excessive amount. So I'm just going to throw it in till it bottoms out right there. And then I like to make a mark. So I put like a little, uh, a little mark on it, just using a knife. Pull that out. And then you can insert the other side into your extruder and measure how far that goes in just by putting another little uh, mark on it just a rough measurement and then just kind of eyeball it and say okay it needs that much more then i'm gonna go to my cutter filament cutter or filament cutter ptfe cutter and then kind of eyeball that extra part that goes into the the extruder just make it about the same and there we go 
if I can mess it up, I can just cut another piece. It's just a tiny little piece of PTFE. An extra thing that I like to do, I learned this from Steve Builds. Uh, hopefully I have my little tool. Should. Um, Uh-oh. Maybe not. I've already used it. When was the last time I used that tool? It's just a little chamfer bit that I'll typically use to chamfer the top of the PTFE. But it looks like I have uh, misplaced it as, as I would expect to have. Okay, well, that's fine. I'll find it later. I'll chamfer it later. It doesn't really, really matter, but it just helps with loading the filament. So you want to, if you can, chamfer the, the top part. So this will go in like this. And then we're going to check to make sure this is the right length. It might be too long, but we'll see. Well, so you want to slide on the extruder like this, and it should sit flush without any like wiggle, wiggle wobble. So right now it's a little long. See that? The PTFE is longer than this, and you don't want to squish it. You really don't want to squish the PTFE. So I'm going to take it and cut off a tiny little bit from the other side. So now it should sit flush. Perfect. I don't think it's critical that it's a edge to edge contact for this, but you just want to make sure that um, it's pressed up on the extruder side. There we go. So that's what that looks like. I might reprint some parts or whatever to make a different accent color. I think there's a lot of blue right here. So some of these might, I might reprint, rebuild it. Uh, but we'll just find what screws work for this. It has to go all the way into that black part. So I think another 20, maybe 16, 20, maybe 20. Might work for this. I've just never seen this extruder, so I was like, oh, I'll, I'll do that. Yay, I like to try new things. Mix it up. Yeah, 20 is perfect. Just like that. Um, so for the sail fin, I actually have to remove this screw completely. Because there's no way of accessing the other one. So remove that screw. Then install... Install the mounting screw. Like that. Get that nice and snug. And then reinstall this screw. Not too bad, but it is what it is. Okay. Perfection. Make sure the the meshing is good. Yeah, still feels good. There's a slight wiggle to this. Slightly loose. That's perfect for the, the drive gear. That's on. Okay. So a few more things. Uh, I'm just really just making sure everything fits. That's the the first step. On the back here. So on the back, if you can see it, there are these two little, little holes right here. So that will stiffen up the bottom quite a bit. Because right now, there's a little bit of flex. Like you can, you can see in the back there, there's a little bit of flex. And it would help stabilize the whole thing by adding those additional screws. And it looks like they're just short, short ones, so six millimeter uh, socket head. Liz, the 100 bits. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll catch you uh, on the Z and Z show, Z and Z show tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern on either twitch.tv slash zombie hedgehog or twitch.tv slash hezliz. Always a fun time.
All right, one thing I noticed, I forgot to install that square nut again. So I'll have to do that. So am I able to... All right, we're going to forge out that square nut, but ideally I should have put that square nut in... Uh, in this part right here. Which one? This one. So then I can install another screw in the back through here. But I mean, the whole thing is is rigid enough, right? It's only so rigid with the poop set up. So let's see. Wow, that's cool. Oop. Pretty cool. Goes up and down, as expected. Um, seems seems good enough. There is a little bit of flex that is noticeable. But during normal printing, you probably won't see that. And this is not going to be a ultra high acceleration printer. This is more focused on um, print to print reliability. But yes, that seems about typical for a, a tap setup. This is about typical of this, like a dragon burner setup. The Rook, for example, has even more, uh, more play on it than that. So, hey, we'll see how it works. Um, this part right here, that's why you can see that this usually, this is why uh, people get it CNC'd, it seems like. Let's see, how can I show you? Um, so, yeah, this, this mount right here. So what is actually flexing? I haven't even installed this whole rail yet, so that's kind of on me, but let's see, I think it is, yeah, this big part on the back here, so this, this one right here seems to have the most, oops, come on now, the most flex to it, but it's also partially the rail. Maybe. Hmm. Be interesting to see how that affects actual printability. Uh, when I first saw tap, I saw videos of people doing that and I was like, wow, that, that can't be right. And then their printers print the same as mine. So that's going to be allegedly fine. Mostly because of how the tool head moves. The tool head itself isn't isn't moving it's moving in relative to like this direction right so we'll see how it works out that's about all i have to say about that there's always click e2 if you do not want if you want to go for ultra high speeds for this type of printer you're probably going to want to go clicky or you can go with beacon if you really wanted to did you use the M3 by 40 for the back plate? Yes, I did. Yep, that is on there. Oh, um, also remember we only have this mounted with two screws. So that might, that might also have a small bit of an impact. So the actual linear rail on this one is mounted with two screws. So take that into consideration too. This is just making sure all the parts fit together. And it does. Might change a few of the accent colors, but I think overall it looks pretty good. Definitely unique. So the one last thing is the the pancake board. Let's see if I can show that. I, I think I might need to print off some spacers. But uh, we have this. This setup right here. So this is our our pancake board. And that goes on to here. Kind of like this. I don't know how it installs, but I think there is a a standoff or something. There's a cover for it. I know I've seen that. Where's the cover? Oh, that's not a cover.
No, it didn't. Oh, yes, that did. So here's the cover. That goes on like that. I don't know if I'll be using that yet, but uh, if everything's wired up perfectly, then... Wow, it doesn't give much room for wire management. All right, well, potentially the cover goes on there. Uh, and then how does that mount? Let's see, how does that mount? So it's possible that it's not... Oh, I think I have it for... Uh, that's the orbiter set up. I don't have the orbiter layout. Let's double check that. Um... This is under Dragon, uh, Dragon Burner? Let's see. Let's see. Oop. Yep. Um, pancake. So this is the, the V0 pancake board, which is what we have here. I will need to go to STL. Uh, oh, is that it? So all the mounts, the brass standoffs, the back of the mini afterburner. Oh, okay. So... We'll have to see if see if there's any um, any mounts for Dragon Burner or not Dragon Burner, but the Sailfin Extruder, because that's technically what it's going to be mounted to. I don't know if there's any. Uh, I don't think there's any PCB mounts here, so it'll probably be on Dragon Burner. Let me just pull that up real quick. This Dragon Burner definitely has some PCB mounts. So let's go on. The main V0. And then. Forget where it's located. Dragon Burner, STLs, it wasn't on here. There's a specific spot for the PCBs. Is it under carriage PCBs? Zero point two mods. No. X carriage. No. The main page. Okay. Uh, alternate printer mounts. Extruder, extruder, nozzle wiper, run out, X carriage, other V2 mounts. Um, What are we looking for here? Is it under the alternative printer mounts? It's on the Dragon Burner page. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, there's mounts. Okay. Probes. LEDs. Yeah, let's get some LEDs on here eventually. Different brace options. There's a lot. Here we go. Here's a PCB mounts. Okay. There we go. What's it under? 
general. Oh, war on general PCB mounts. Okay, that makes sense. Because it's not strictly for Dragon Burner. All right, STLs. Hey, there we go. Uh, we have. Is it even supported? What is this thing again? Sail fin? Shark fin? Shark fin? Is that the same thing? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. And let's just double check how that mounts. Uh, oh, okay. So those are the standoffs. Okay. I think I, yeah, PCB carrier, um, dragon burner, rapid burner. So we want dragon burner right here with the wow this is a little bit confusing oh wait no there's a, another shark fin dragon burner okay let's see what's that shark fin dragon burner 36 okay potentially that looking at the yeah looking at the the way that my extruder is mounted, it looks like this is correct right here. Uh, but then I don't know. I don't know if this works because it have the has those extra uh, slots on here, and I don't think that's going to be compatible with this setup. We'll have to. Oh yeah, this is the generic one. So I have to trim those off and just not use them. Not a hundred percent sure, but I'll I'll play with that off stream. There's plenty of options as as you can see, all the holes spacing. Uh. But I did use this for one of mine, and actually was able to screw it in using this. And it's pretty cool. It works well. So what what this piece right here is, it's a printed like standoff thing. This will screw into the back of the extruder, and then just extend the, extend the whole thing. So I'll keep that up for a future stream. And then that would, that would allow this to be mounted. Like so. Otherwise, it would be like this. Because of how the... How that works out. So, we're going to mount it like this. It'll be just like that. A little bit offset. Because this extruder, the, the, the gear is... Or the motor is offset a little. I don't love that, but it works. Is it offset that much? Unless it's fine. You know what? It does. It's pretty much centered, actually. It's not that bad. Hm. Cool. So that'll be on there. This little PCB on the back will just connect up to that, and that will connect to the uh, which port? Switch, stepper, part fan. Uh, what part does that connect to? Heater, thermistor, hot end fan. So I think it's one of the switches. Yeah, it'll be either switch switch one or switch zero. That'll give us five volts, ground, and our signal pin. I think that's all we need for for that board right there, which works on five volts or twenty four volts. So I think we're we're good running at five volts. So otherwise, than that, I'm gonna have to trim down this this oversized extruder right right here um probably trim these wires it looks like it looks like yeah the the connector that's used is slightly different although it might work with this 
the thermistor is definitely a different connection so i'll have to recrimp that so if you're getting this kit you will have to do a little bit of crimping so it's not a complete just wire in your done kit that is to be expected and i'll make sure that that's noted on the page that you'll want to pick up a crimper i don't think you'll need to buy additional crimping supplies like that can that PCV comes with all the pins you need. So it comes with all of the, the crimping pins. And other than that, I don't think there's anything really. So you'll want to get a wire stripper and a crimper. So if you remind me in the VOD, I'll make sure to link that down in the video description. Otherwise, I'll make sure that that gets specified. So really, the next steps for this is going to be wiring. First of all, um, I'll have to replace this X-Rail with the correct rail. Um, I do have the backers installed on here. I didn't mention that, but I have the backers on the front and it looks really good. They have the Micron logo. I love it. And I have a backer on this X-Bar too. Um, so waiting on wiring. Got to install this Z-Chain, which I can show you how that's going to look. I'm actually curious. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. So it's a little long right now, but we'll mount a little something like this. So this is the printed mount. You can either use the printed version or the version that it comes with. Um, either way will work fine. Just follow these specific instructions for getting it installed. All right, so for that, I'll need to move, move this over a little. Okay. And then this, there's an extra, an extra square nut on this bottom rail that you installed previously. And then that will screw into it just like that. And then this part right here presses up against this to make sure that doesn't go the other way. Although I don't think that's really needed. Not with this setup, but we can screw that anyway. So that goes like that. So all of the wires will come through this nice little printed drag chain. I think it looks good. It's pretty, pretty sick, honestly. And then I can modify, you know, where this is probably going to go a little bit more this way. I just guessed when I installed this originally, but that'll probably look like that. There we go. Something like that. So there you go. That's that printed drag chain. So that'll go um, up and down. Well, this part will go up and down as the gantry goes up and down, and that'll contain all the wires. I also have this little cable gland set. That's kind of cool. And that just screws into the back here. So the wire for the tool head should come up here and into this little little section here. And then I'll run that into the drag chain. And that'll be the wiring for the XY, just the two motors and then everything from the tool head. No additional end stops. Um, maybe put a chamber thermistor somewhere around the back here. I think that'd be a good idea. Chamber thermistors are always recommended instead of whatever is on the tool head. Although we might be able to throw... How many sensors does that more have? Does it have two thermistors? Two switches, hot end fan, one thermistor, one heater. Okay. Yeah, just one thermistor. I don't think there's one built into this board. So you'll probably, if you want to, just run next to your thermistor in this drag chain and leave a thermistor like in the drag chain and that will, um, that'll give you a chamber temperature. You can honestly let it dangle and have it stick out at the bottom here and then just attach it with the zip ties just for a more or less alphabetical one. Shouldn't the bottom be attached next to the hole in the bottom panel? Um, 
No, I'm using the printed drag chain version. So it gets screwed into this square nut that we preloaded. And then um, it'll the wires just kind of come out to here. I think with the official the regular drag chain, there's a different mount for that. And you're right, it does come out next to there. So I don't know why this mounts here instead of over there. Doesn't really make sense to me, but that's just how it is. That is how it is. I just went with the blue because it adds a very nice, very, very nice look to it. And shouldn't, Gantry shouldn't touch it. Um, no, Gantry does not touch it. Allegedly with the, the new Gantry, it may interfere with the printed drag chain. So if that, that's the case, then just use the stock drag chain it comes with. But currently it does not touch. Which is actually nice. I'm used to the the Trident 2.4 getting real close to it because it has a drag chain on it. All right. Any questions before I call it? So again, future wiring, um, installing skirts. Pretty straightforward, honestly. Um, I'm gonna make the wiring look like what's gonna be on the diagram. Pretty simple. I might start installing the skirts. There's this bunch of bunch of pieces that look like uh like this and those will go on the the sides and the front etc and then start wiring it up so i'll do that all off screen and you want me to cut these belts i don't want to cut them like i want to leave them let's cut them a little bit just so it doesn't look too too stupid for much longer we go on the side other side of the 15 by 15 um, it's designed them out like this. Has a hole there and has a nut there. Let's cut this. I'll leave it a few, a few notches to make it installable in the future. Let's say four, four notches. I can always trim it more if needed. Perfect. That's taken care of. Again, you don't have to leave the belts that long when you install them on the Z axis, but I just did. So we'll have to do the belts. There is a mod for a rear inlet. We'll have to do that as well. It, um, it mounts the filament sensor. So I don't think I have any parts printer for that yet. I'll have to go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna install panels yet. I'll wait till the whole thing is built. But those will just screw on onto the outside and then more or less stay on. I'm not going to be removing them. Uh, anything else major? The bed will have to be installed at one point. I don't have the heater for it yet, so I didn't bother installing it. But the bed will mount. I'm not sure. The bed will mount on there. It's somewhere 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 and then it'll get wired up yeah that's pretty much it and then final tuning setting up the the boop will be interesting because I've never set that up I'm guessing it'll be pretty much like a standard end stop just using this instead so I think that's a lot of fun. I'm very, very impressed with this build so far. Um, as long as you're following the manual, you should be fine. <laughs> so I'll prob I'll try to make a like tips and tricks like mini guide. The stuff that I found was challenging and post that. So just to summarize from this video, I ran into issues with needing to install the AB belts before installing the gantry onto the printer, <clears throat> installing the um, the Z belts while assembling these lower these parts down here, so those have to be run through at the same time, ideally. I believe there is an additional modification for these parts if you wanted to use those. 
All my nuts have been preloaded so far, knock on wood. Um, make sure to use the printed parts as spacers. So these parts right here, make sure you're using them to, to align everything. The Z axis, the AB, or the XY, all, all the rails should be centered as best as possible. Hmm, what else? Make sure before tightening the Z belts that these tensioners are at their least tensioned point. Same thing with the AB belts. Make sure that it's not tensioned at all so you have room for adjustment. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. We went through a lot of printed parts. There's still a lot left. Uh, most of those are skirt pieces and different mounting pieces. There is a foldable, a foldable filament holder. I don't know where the other part of it went, but where did that go? It's a little piece, but the filament uh, holder, yeah, it's probably around here somewhere. I don't even know what half these parts are. Filament holder has a little like locking part that goes either straight out or it folds in. So I'd recommend printing that if you're gonna be traveling with the printer. I feel like a lot of people are going to be, so that, that'll that push it flat. I'm very excited for everyone to get these kits and build them. Because look at it, it's, it's it, that's it. That's essentially what it's gonna look like. It's so small and it's gonna be pretty decent performing at the end of it. If you wanted to, you could put a Revo in there. I might be tempted to put a Revo in this. I really might be. Because swapping out, well, I don't know. Swapping nozzles won't be a pain because it has boop. It automatically calculates the, the offset every time you print. So there's not much of a difference on just swap out the nozzle the regular way versus using a Revo. Still about 500 parts in the desk. I know, I know. It looks like there's a lot. Some of them are extras. Uh, are they extras? What does this part go to? Yeah, see, some of the stuff I don't even... Like, what is this part? I guess I'll figure it out. Uh, some, some parts, some parts left over. But yeah, a lot of them are mounting the panels. Like, that's the majority of the, of the parts. I'll pull up the CAD one more time, and then we'll call it. So this has been a part three for the uh, the build series, more of a documentation of of the printer of the kit. There is still minor changes to be made, so your kit might vary, but it'll be pretty similar at the end of the day. Let's see, so without the panels, this is what it looks like. So this is without panels, and this is kind of what we have here. I have to print off these handles. I love how these look. And we have a different tool head. So this would be for the kind of stock tool head arrangement, if you're using that. So you can see that that board would mount like that. But we're using Boop. This is using Clicky. If you're using Clicky, the probe sticks out back here. You probably don't lose too much travel with that. There's still quite a bit of over travel. So you're probably probably fine to use a uh, clicky as well. Now you have all the skirt pieces. We will be using a screen. So this front will have a screen on it. Then electronics will be mounted similar to this. We'll have our two rails with the power supply, board, relay, and then Raspberry Pi. Get that all wired up. Oh, okay. So a lot of the pieces are these little accent skirt pieces. That's cool. I like that. It gives a little bit of a flare. Oh, yeah. That will be cool. That will be blue. I like it. Cool, cool. 
I don't know what those big... Yeah, is it these? Oh no, that's just the two different style of motors. What are those big blue pieces for with the M5 screws? I have no idea. Oh, uh, I guess we'll never know. We'll never know. Oh well. Well. That's been it for war now. I will do another update once I've received more parts to continue building it. Mostly going to be electronics. And I'll show at least one more, do one more video of, of this thing printing and some of the configurations, etc. And then go over any possible changes that you might get in your kit. So if you have any suggestions on things to add to the kit, now is a great time to do so. I think it's pretty much good as is. So this will be available at West 3D. Make sure to check the link in the video description if you want to uh, check out the kit or any of the other things that West 3D do, uh, offers. Um, this will be offered as a partial configurator. You'll be able to make some minor changes like potentially the hot end, the probe type. Um, very, very minor changes. Maybe the screen, control board, stuff like that. But the overall kit will be included as is. And I think it's kind of good. Just, uh, you know, the, the stock the stock BOM is probably going to be sufficient. So, that being said, thank you for sticking along for this journey. I'll be uploading this onto YouTube later. So if you're watching this live, well, it'll be on YouTube after. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe and leave a comment down below what additional features, you, features you'd like to see included in the kit and what other type of content you'd like to see me do in the future. Do you want to see uh, Positron content? Maybe. We'll see. So thanks for tuning in. Check out my other videos that I have on uh, YouTube. I have some uh, Trident build series, 2.4 build series. They're not guides, but they're mostly just, again, documenting what I uh, installed. Check out my Rook build series. If you'd like to see part two of the Rooks where I do wiring, maybe one of these days I'll have to do a wiring stream. So thanks for tuning in. Have a good night, good morning, good evening, and goodbye.